to do's, reviewing the news, pop culture, video games, movies, and shoes. Quincy and Justin with a nerdy forecast. So stay a while and welcome to the Ugly Mugs Podcast. Welcome to the Ugly Mugs Podcast. I'm your host, Quincy. And your other host, Justin. Uh, so uh, we're doing the last of my sampler box this week. Yes. Get that whole geek grind yeah, well, mill. Uh, well, those now. guys there. There we go. <laughs> All right, so um, it's Frost Giant. Uh, it's their cold brew. And the reason why this one took so long is I needed a cold brew maker because I wasn't going to try to do it with a mason jar on the fridge and all that because that is way more work than I ever want to bother with. <laughs> yeah, meanwhile, you said you just poured it in there and left it in the fridge, right? Yeah, yeah. Basically, the one I have is it's simple. You fill like this filtered section in the center of it up with the grinds, and then you fill it up with water, and you let it sit for anywhere from, I think they suggest, 12 to 36 hours. This one was made at nine, roughly around nine o'clock last night. So we are at twenty-one hours ish. Well, I pulled it out of the fridge a little bit ago, but we're so we're around twenty hours ish, give or take. Um, so it's frost right, cold brew, medium dark roast. Um, this is on the ground now. Um, this is their. Oh, this is their little sampler bag with the full art. Um, we'll uh, pull up the website here in a minute for it. Um, but, uh, it's pretty good. Um, I, I did it without cream and sugar first, and now I'm trying it with cream and sugar. Not bad. Uh, tastes a little bit like some of the other ones. Um, obviously it's cold. I'm not a big fan of cold coffee. Now you can heat up a cold brew. Um, I just didn't do that with this one. So the concept of cold brew is that it's supposed to make it stronger because it takes longer to make. Okay. So you can take a cold brew coffee and then reheat it with you want to be careful because you don't want to burn it no um i've never actually done that with a cold brew so i'm thinking i'm going to take a cold brew i like maybe this one because this isn't bad and try it warmed up um so i might buy a bag of this to try that with especially because i've got uh, the cold brew maker now um yeah. i've tried regular coffees in the cold brew maker and it's i heard it, it's a finicky thing yeah so i i did folgers and that didn't turn out bad but not great but not great and I, and I think a lot also comes down to the grind because it needs to be more of a medium grind and less of a fine grind the, the the grind of the coffee really is important depending on how you're making coffee whether you're making uh a drip a french press espresso cold brew so on and so forth there's different grinds you, you want your coffee grind uh ground down to um but this is the company geek grind uh one of our sponsors technically yeah. in, in a sense in a sense we're um, helping them. They're helping us. Yeah. So you can grab our link. It is in the show description. It is on our Instagram. It is on our Twitter. It is everywhere. It is pretty much um, everywhere. And you can also use our discount code, which is just H20. That's J U S T H two zero for 20% off. Mm -hmm. What are you drinking? We didn't get you something new. We went with a tried and true. Tried and true. It is a Tivana. Uh, it is the um, spiced apple cider. And I didn't do any sugar in it because I was like, my throat's giving me a little bit of a bother. Not like raspy, but I can feel a little itch. And I was just like, you know what? That sounds like a good idea. Instead of like the, the tangerine or anything like that, I said, I'll, I'll just stick with something that'll coat the throat. And I went without, as I said, without sugar. So you can definitely taste all the spice in there. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, I should have added sugar. <laughs> it's kicking your ass. Eh. Um, yeah, it's kicking my ass. Gotcha. Uh, I'm glad we found some that you like, though, and want to keep going back to, um, especially because there's a lot of fucking tea in the cupboard downstairs there and we is... need to go through it. Yes. <laughs> so probably for the, probably for this year, we're going to probably run into a lot of repeats. Yeah. I mean, it's been a fun over a year. It's been. Oh yeah. Last two years. How long have we years. been doing the show? Two years now? About two years. Okay. Because so... we're on episode 103. Each, each year is 52. Yeah, yeah. So, so we're, we're over two years now. And I think I've repeated coffee once, maybe twice. Because mm -hmm. I, I, you probably pulled, you probably pulled an audible real quick because we were like, we don't have anything. Uh, Folgers, screw it, get yeah. out, get us up there. But one of the great things is, is I own almost every way to make coffee, and so I can even go back and try different coffees in different forms now. And that's probably what I might start doing over this year. Now that I'm officially out of my sampler box, but I mean, there's plenty of coffees for me to still try in the stores. I've got family that. Hopefully, we'll make it back to the States uh, in the coming months, and they're going to be bringing me coffees, all kinds of stuff. 
Um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I, I've got family stuck in another country, and they're they're still looking at not until August when they get to come back. Oh, not because of how our country is running it, but because they, of how the country they're in is running is running it. Uh, they can't travel out here. Um, it got to the point that they rented an apartment and bought furniture that they're now having shipped back to the states when they come because they essentially have to move everything their themselves into oh, <laughs> back Jesus to the country. Christ. It's gonna cost about three grand to move all the furniture. I expected more considering it's one country to another. Right, but, but still, ow, okay. Um, but even still, yes, uh, check them out. They have a lot of really good flavored coffees mm-hmm. um, and now teas. Now teas. That'll be something we buy for you this year. Um, at some point we will buy both these teas. Now I've stayed away. You haven't had any English breakfast. I've on had. The pod. I've had one. You've had one. I've had one uh, black tea, and I, I'm not a big fan of black tea. It's just me and it. I have to be in a very, very, very particular mood for it, and I have to add a lead, either a lot of sugar or a lot of mm-hmm. um, honey to it to make it not as as strong. Well, I've avoided buying any black, uh, not black teas, but English breakfast teas when it came to when I would go to the store and buy teas. I've avoided it because my thought process has always been it, it's called English breakfast tea for a reason. It, it's supposed to be part of like the morning ritual, morning wake up. But now that you're on a pretty set schedule, this is your morning. Yes. So you could now do it. I could. But what happened? I just clicked it. It's oh, right. <laughs> I was like, wow, the page went white. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we now it makes sense. I could probably start doing the, the breakfast teas because yeah. I've been dodging them this whole time. I would say go go small on it because I don't know how, how oh, yeah. I, I will. I, I don't ever try to buy big batches. The problem is they're all sold in like 24 fucking counts. Yeah, this one does add a little bit of interest because it's peppermint, rose hips, spearmint, ginger, ruby uh, bose, uh, hibiscus. And I'm like, I like most of those things because they are very antioxidant. They are mm. very healthy. So I'm I'm thinking this one might be good. Mm-hmm. I don't know how well it'll taste because you got peppermint and spearmint, which are two different kinds of mints. Very, contract. it's gonna be very, it's very much gonna open your sinuses. Um, oh, yeah. what's the go back down? Mm-hmm. Uh, rose hip. Yes, rose hips. Uh, it is. What is that? Because I've heard of rose, and it's got rose in it, but it's got rose hip. What rose, is rose hip? Uh, rose hip is like a variant of vitamin C. It's something to kind of reagent vitamin C to help into the body and keep it. Lack of better words immune booster okay but it's not the same as like when they do rose it's something different it's something different okay. uh, lightly different rose might be for the same i don't know what rose is used for i mean rose, I know rose the flower yeah, i know i know but i mean as far as internally oh no i'm talking i'm not talking about what does it do i'm talking about oh what, what is, is it? it like oh. yeah like what is rose hip oh it's like a berry looking thing uh, oh, rose a haw, a rose hep is a fruit of a rose plant it is typically red to orange but ranges interesting okay yeah and then there's the chat with the answer which the chat also says that they like english breakfast thank you socks for the information i've never heard of it so this was this was new to me uh i've heard of it in when it, whenever you buy vitamin c and it says vitamin c with rose hips mm-hmm. i recommend that one more because i feel it gives a little bit more it makes you feel a little bit more energetic and a little bit more immunized yeah. lauren's know. done rose boba so i've had like the rose boba and it, it tastes like the smowers uh, smowers the smowers the flowers smell shmi shmi shmo damn brain it's okay it's been a long fucking week yeah um before we get into the news though we'll leave geek right up for now and people can stare at that freaking beautiful artwork um before we get into the news this is one thing i don't have pulled up um i have always liked tech there's a lot of tech in my house. I'm slowly making the house more of a smart house. And I've decided that I'm going to buy a, ra- a Raspberry Pi. Yeah, you got a smart I'm, yeah, I'm a smart watch. I decided I'm going to buy a Raspberry Pi, and I'm going to start learning Linux and start, you know, expanding my mind and whatnot. And I'm going to build a Wi-Fi booster for the office out of, you know, of Raspberry Pi and whatnot. And I'm, I'm going to learn some stuff. Okay. We missed a news story back in November. Have you heard about the Raspberry Pi 400? Numbers don't mean much, but I do. I, I know a little bit about. So you know what a Raspberry Pi is? Yes. You know that as you go up in numbers, they get bigger. Four being the biggest one. Okay. They've got a four hundred now. It's smaller. No. Oh. It's already built to be a computer, just like a four is. Okay. But it's built long ways and inside of a keyboard. Your whole computer is in the keyboard. Is this? It's the computer. It's it's, it's this. It's, it's I'm, keyboard. I'm, I'm it's up. smaller than that. Oh, because it doesn't have numericals? No, it's just smaller. Oh, okay. it, it, yeah, it pulled up. It may not have the, the numerics. Um, um, just Raspberry Pi 400. 
I don't know if it. It's just pi. Yeah, I know. I don't know if raspberry was. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's spelled that. Uh, yeah. Go from their actual website. That's it. So yeah, you're right. It didn't have the numerics. That is the whole thing. It's got the ports on the back. You plug in the monitor. You connect. There you go. Uh, so it's got Ethernet. You plug in the monitor. It's got the USB 2.0 for power. The uh, or actually, sorry, USB 2.0. Two USB 3.0s. Got the USB C for power. Two micro HDMI's. The uh, micro SD card slot. That's where you're uh, gonna basically put your brain. And that's got the GOP uh, PI herder, which I love. So you can still control shit with this. One of those USB ports. You plug in the mouse. There it's a hundred bucks. Yeah. You've got an entire computer for a hundred bucks. I can't believe we missed this back in November. I was I've been looking at a bunch of Raspberry Pi. The heat sink in this thing's huge compared to what it needs. The entire keyboard size of a heat sink. Hmm. Like the the underneath of where the buttons are, that whole thing's got a metal plate for heat sinking. So this thing doesn't even get anywhere near hot. I'm just curious like it oh, wow. Yeah, I'm surprised we we left this to to go. It's... I never heard about. It. And I and I think it's one of those things that I'm noticing about about it, uh what we hear through what we listen to, what we watch and whatnot. The Raspberry Pi is a UK based company. Yeah. So and... therefore it was not heavy in our news. Despite it Raspberry Pi is being very important because it teaches kids and adults how to program and work on computers and whatnot. So um yeah, when I came across this I, I was upset with our uh, with us for <laughs> having missed it. Um and I wanted to bring it up. I thought it was really cool. The amount of shit you can do with that one this little baby thing. Yeah, that one I think runs seventy five. Might be the thirty five one. Um but they've got a new one. This one's relatively new. I have not missed this because this just came out. If you can find the Pico on here, P I C O. Um, uh, what is it? Hardware? Yeah, hardware. Right there. This little guy, four dollars. Huh? Yeah. That's their new one. That's the newest thing to come out of Raspberry Pi. So um, this one obviously can't do nearly as much. However, what you can do with a bunch of these is build yourself a server. For storage. Wow. You can hook up a bunch of them together. Yeah, so the hundred dollar one, I think it's seventy five if you do just the keyboard, it's a hundred if you do the full thing, which comes with the mouse, the wires, the SD card, the booklet, all that. And that booklet's really important. That booklet teaches you a lot. And then you got one of these and you can just you can literally build a Raspberry Pi everything. Just all you need is a monitor. Yeah. So with the you can do it with the Picos or you can do it with the, the other ones too, but I would do it with the Picos. People are actually taking circuit boards that are built to fit those and building themselves a server for their house. Not for internet per se, but for like Stor personal media. storage. Yeah, media storage, anything like that. Um, however, people are using regular Raspberry Pis, and you probably do it with the Picos if you do it right, to build Minecraft servers because the Raspberry Pi can still run the Java uh, Minecraft and you can build personal server. Right, you just need to have the space for it. Okay, holy crap. Sounds like it'd be fun for somebody who rages and snaps keyboards. No. That, I mean, the, the thing is, is the only thing you're playing on this is retro. Uh, so they've got Raspberry Pi Retro, which was actually on one of the previous pages. Yeah. Um, it's only for, um, what do they call it? Emulators? Yeah, it emulates all the way up to the 64. However, some people have gotten things like Spyro from the PlayStation 2 to work on it perfectly. Oh, well, yeah. Cause... But it emulates all the way to the 64. And it's got all of it there for you. You just load the games on the SD card, the mini SD card, stick it in there, there. and you're good to go. You could literally... If you were to, with the way the, way the Raspberry Pis work, actually, since we're on hardware, um, can we go back down? Oh, oh you clicked. I did. <laughs> uh, this one here. So the Raspberry Pi Model B. See how it's got the prongs in the back? That's for hooking different things up, whether it's um, LEDs or controllers or what have you. This is the $35 one. Uh, so it's uh, can go all the way up to 8 gigabytes. Um, they say they can do 4K also. Hmm. Um, so with this... You can put a fan on it, put a heat seek on it, hook it up. You can build an arcade cabinet with this thing. All you need is to build the housing, put this in it, and you got put you, the retro program on it, put the card put in. The name on it. Okay. It's got the spot on the back where you can hook up the fight stick and hook up a monitor. You can literally build with working LEDs an entire retro arcade with this thing. This is starting at $75. The software, I do believe, is free. It runs Linux, which is completely customizable. And it does HDMI. So you just a monitor that you like 
that's not overly big, looks nice, you can build an entire arcade cabinet for a fraction of what they charge you for a small one at the stores. People have built arcade cabinets with this thing that sit on your desk. They're rather nice. But I personally would build the full stand-up. Yeah. Probably yeah. put a stool there if I get tired. I would probably do a half then with the stool, so that way, you know, just that way there you don't have to stand up in your own guy. Look up house. Raspberry Pi arcade machine. You're going to love the desk ones. You're going to want one of the desk ones. Uh... That right there. This right here? Yep. Sits right on your desk. Now, people have done things with the retro ones where they're in the little cases that look like NESs, Super NESs, so on and so forth. But that sits perfectly on your desk and you sit there. Yeah. 178 bucks. I mean, I mean you could do it for less if you build it yourself. Yeah. I took wood shop. <laughs> My main issue is I don't have all the tools, so it'd be a lot of like old school in it, but. <laughs> Using the back of a wrench as a hammer. <laughs> okay, I have hammers. <laughs> I was talking. I don't have a table saw. <laughs> so I'd be using a, using the back of a wrench. <laughs> back of a wrench to slowly chip away <laughs> with like a screwdriver. Just... Um, I mean, yeah. And there, there's no limit to what you can do with Raspberry Pi. People have built some scary things, hacking devices with Raspberry Pis. But people have built weather stations. They've built FM uh, transmitters. They have built Wi-Fi boosters. They have built arcade cabinets. You can do drones with them. You can all kinds. of... Um, I have a project I officially want to do with one. Um, I'm not going to talk about it on here. What I'm probably going to do is I'll probably film it in parts yeah, as I do it. But, okay. Yeah, I was upset that we missed the 400, and I wanted to talk about the Pico. So I was like, well, talking about the Pico will be a great time to talk about the 400. So a little bit of tech for you guys. Oh, yeah. needs to be turned around. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. He was facing me because of the Instagram post. Last week's movies. Yeah, last week's movies. Spies Like Us and Stripes, uh, both of which were pretty fun, pretty fun movies. Mm -hmm. Spies Like Us was very strange for Chevy Chase and Dan Aykroyd. Yeah. Um, not bad, just very strange for these two. They're buffoons. They get pulled up into the high CIA. But they're also smart. Like, one of them truly is smart. He more got, kind of got screwed over. And yeah. And really should not have helped Ac uh, not Aykroyd, uh, Chevy Chase's character. Um... 85 so it's a couple years after our other one uh i personally have always loved this movie and re-watching it as a kid i uh re watching it as an adult now having watched it as like a teenager before um i still like it i still think it's good i, th I think it holds up it's funny um i was a little bummed out because it was you lauren and one of her friends like watching these two movies and there was never a moment where the movie just straight up either one of the movies killed you guys and you guys weren't just stripes got me Blown out laughing. Stripes. Was there a part with stripes? There was a part with stripes because uh, Bill Murray is a godsend. I was talking to someone about it and they said, Well, you got to remember those movies are from the 80s. Some of those jokes don't hold up. I'm like, Ghostbusters hold up. But Ghostbusters hold, holds up. Plenty of 80s movies hold up. And I don't think any of these jokes didn't hold up. I think they're still funny now. No. Spies so Like Us did hit a little bit of a flat note here and there. There was uh, a couple notes that got a chuckle, but stripes got me with. Okay. With, uh, with Murray. With Murray. Um, so it's sitting at 32% on Rotten Tomatoes. I feel like that's probably taken a big hit in the more recent years, but I don't think it's always been, well, uh, 56 from the audience. I mean, that's it's better. It's not great. Um, I mean, you're also asking people to review this thing, this movie that from before the internet existed, people are now reviewing it on the internet. <laughs> yeah. So... 2009, 2018, 2006, 2003, 18, 11. Hey, there's a good review. But yeah, um, we're not even seeing a review from before like 2003. Yeah, and I mean, they're not good numbers. They're, they're not, not great, great numbers. And I kind of have to agree with them that, that, you know, I would say this is about 60 for me. It's... It's fun I'm not saying like, it's the greatest company ever. No, no. Like when when watching, the costumes are great, the set pieces are nice, the uh, individual characters that are brought in are great, but I, nothing is really memorable for me. Like I, I'm having a hard time remembering the plot premise aside from what they were sent to do. I know. Stop the the. There are the diversion because there's a leak, and then with the leak moving through, and having the other two. The other two are going in to go and hijack the bomb. So the the actual two spies are supposed to go and stop the launch. They're supposed to put some code in to end this 
nuke being shot at the U.S. But they got the idea. diversion ones are being told essentially the same thing, kind of. They're, they're, they're not given all that information. They're told they're supposed to meet. At different places. They're, yeah, they're supposed to meet their correspondent. And it's because that's the one that they're being a little bit more open about. We're sending these people in, yada, 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 so that the leaks focused on them. They run into German spy, or Russian spies multiple times. The thing is, is that this is the one layer of the movie I don't like. It turns out that the whole, we're sending them in, and we're going to give them this code to punch it in and stop the nuke. It's actually to launch the nuke. Yes. So that they can test a anti uh, nuclear yeah which then also turns out to be a ruse to actually nuke the u.s because if we don't have an enemy then what's the point of us yes that whole thing i was like get rid of all of that we didn't need any of that yeah if it was a oh we're just testing it out and it was it was a haha the whole entire time like the there was no bomb to begin with and everyone literally was like well everyone's gonna die in like this long might as well. It could even and, had it been that they got there late and the nuke launched off and Ackroyd still has his brain blast moment and, you know, disarms it. That still would have been acceptable. That would have been acceptable. The whole crooked general trying to nuke the U.S. to feel important thing. I was like, get Why? the fuck out of here with that. That is way too much. Yeah, but the, the boot camp scene was probably the, the only scene that can honestly lock down. When their faces are frozen back. <laughs> and complaining to him as they're they're marching beside him and he's like what about the surgery scene this man is dead <laughs> they didn't even do anything it, 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 it hit a little different but yeah i'll give you that one too. <laughs> shave him first okay <laughs> they're trying to remove his appendix they're trying to cut up in his chest did you see me cut <laughs> there's good moments in the movie i can understand it being the lesser of the two though and 60s, I think, you know, that's not a terrible review. Um, I'll probably put it in, like, the 70s for me. It's not the greatest 80s comedy. I love 80s movies. I, I also love do. 80s music. You love everything 80s. The games are pretty good. I, I think gaming got way better. And while I like the nostalgia, and while Raspberry Pi would be cool to go back and play retro games, reality is I'm going to get bored with them and I'm going to move on to something new. Of course. So I think I will cut off at I like the music in the movies. I enjoy other things. From it, sure, but the the, the real sucking is the, the music in the movies. Now, I think 32 is a little rough. I think 56 is a little rough. I think the movie worked. It made its money. I put a little higher than that, personally. Um, but I also don't expect people reviewing a movie in the 80s and the 2000s to do all that great. 88, do it's you a little think, bit nicer. Do you think 88 is fair, though? It's not where I would rate it. I think it's a little high. I like I said, I probably put this in the seventies. Okay. Um, but I, I don't think the movie's shit. So okay. I, I don't think it deserves the failing grades it's getting in other places. Because if you scroll back down, you'll even see it's it's a two point a two out of five on Common Sense Media. Although a place called Common Sense Media, I don't think would like the jokes in this. <laughs> so I feel like the jokes are a, a bit risque for them. Hmm. <laughs> The cheating scene was funny, too. The cheating scene was pretty good, <laughs> but I didn't remember it offhand. And not until I just saw this. See, look, this is the kind of place that, you know, they're talking about the sex, they're talking about the language, they're talking about the violence, the drugs, drugs and drinking and smoking. And, and I get that, you know, there's a need for that information and that information should be, should be out there. But that's also information that's kind of there for parents that has, it doesn't really have anything to do with reviewing a movie yeah that, that parents guide so now here's my problem with parents guides this movie is rated what an r uh pretty sure it's r rating oh no it says pg there's no way it's pg pg this is pg 85 this had nudity in it it should be no, at wait. least a pg 13 wasn't it supposed like this oh yeah it did well it had it had... Her top was see-through. Her top was see-through. Like, fine, it didn't have nudity because she was wearing a bra, but the bra was completely see-through. Yes. But meanwhile, Stripes... It should be PG-13. Stripes though. had nudity. But my, my whole they... thought... I was going to say my whole thought process on those things is I've never really understood why they get that in-depth because of ratings, but the ratings kind of dropped the ball on this one. Uh, Stripes has got to be an R. If it's a PG-13, I'll accept it because it's the yeah, 80s. It's R. R, okay. So, Stripes. Um... Bill Murray, uh, John Candy, Harold Remus, John Candy, 
um, they joined the army. Simple. It was a simple story that a guy just had a, a real rough time with his taxi driving job and his girlfriend. And then he's just like, he's getting older and he doesn't want to not achieve anything. So he said, I'll, I'll, you know what? Military sounds like a good idea. I don't know if I'm cut out for it, but I'm going to try it. And Did this paint the army in a good light, in your opinion? In a way, yes. But also in a way, in a, kind of made them buffoons. And I mean, yes, considering you had a, I don't know what his rank was, but he was like, just just fire the freaking thing. And they're like, but we they don't, mortar strike someone. Yeah, they mortar strike one, another high ranking officer, officer. And it's like, this is your, this is your your weaponry you're supposed to have a knowledge of it if you're gonna allow someone else to use it mm -hmm. and i was like oh. um but yes and no it did have it had really good moments the so. army was 100 percent willing to work with us and helped them out with all kinds of shit which is interesting because parts of it don't paint the army in a good light parts of it do um but it's funny i enjoy it i don't take any of the jokes to heart you now and i still respect our armed forces and whatnot and yes. still enjoy this movie in I, fact, I, I know people in the armed forces that think this movie is fucking hilarious. Yeah. So. Uh, as for the ratings, they're very interesting. 6.9 out of 10 on IMDb, also known as a 69 out of 10, or 100. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, 86 on Rotten Tomatoes, 68 on Metacritic, and 85 on Google Users. This thing is pretty small, varied, compared to all the movies we usually see. Yeah, it, it's weird that there's like a 20-point gap almost from IMDb and Metacritic, but when we get to Google and Rotten, it's a 1% difference, which is very rare. Let's go see what these guys got. 79 from the audience. That's Okay, that's a little more staggering. Yeah. But I would say I'll throw it at, a, at about an 80. Like, yeah. this one's a little bit more... This one was more bubbly more fun more action-packed and a little out there during the um breaking and getting all of their friends out yeah, the, the end has always felt a little weird um and to think there was more to that that the studio loved that the director cut oh uh there's a part where two characters i do believe it's murray and remus's characters uh accidentally do lsd and end up in like the vietnam jungle or something like that and the and paramount thought it was amazing and the director's like i'm cutting all of this <laughs> i mean so. yeah i mean the movie already hit over two hours if i remember yeah it correctly, yeah it's so. over two hours it's a little, little on the long side but yeah i mean i, I would uh hour 45 never mind i would have mm, i would let it go is that correct uh, it's imdb let's go back and let's go back over to no, here no, it's rotten not imdb oh yes uh two six there two six here let's check imdb hour uh, 46 so i'll I guess there's different versions of the film out there Maybe an uncut? Maybe. I, I don't yeah. want the LSD scene personally. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm good without it. Um, wow. So, yeah, it's it's sitting in the 80s for the most part. Um, I'll put it in the 80s. I'll, I'll throw it in the low 80s. So what was the part that, that got you to chortle? Um, It was toward the beginning. Actually, it was the beginning when he's driving the, the taxi cab and uh, the, you know, he's... Oh, I'm a little bit. I had some cough <laughs> syrup earlier. <laughs> that one got me. I will admit. And then um, when she goes, "You are a horrible man," and you know berates him, and he's just like, "You know, I just don't really like dealing with you." And he just pulls over out in the middle of everybody, takes the keys, gets out of the car, walks over to the end of the bridge, starts pulling her shit out, <laughs> throws the keys. Um. The scene where he's loading the luggage at the very beginning into the trunk, and he goes, oh, my balls, was legit. He hit himself in the nuts with the luggage. It was like, oh, my balls. Um, I love the basketball scene. And when he's trying to, he oh. throws it out the window. He's trying to get the person to throw it back. And he's like, yeah, come on, come on. And the they break window. it through the other window. Um, uh, Ramus is amazing in this, too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I bet you three bucks. Yeah. Uh, I can do push-ups, not military, uh, not marine push-ups, push regular push-ups. <laughs> uh, the sergeant that's in control of the platoon is great. And a fun little story from this one. So John Candy invited everyone that was in the platoon, not everyone in the movie, but everyone that was part of their platoon, over to his house for spaghetti dinner and to watch a fight, like a boxing fight. Okay. Some famed boxing fight. I don't remember which one it was. Okay. Um, and that while they were discussing it, found out that him and, I do believe, Conrad Dune, the actor that plays Psycho, were the only ones that knew the uh, song to do uh, the lyrics to Do Wah Diddy, the She Was Walking Down the Street song. 
And so that night turned into spaghetti in a boxy fight and to them teaching 10 or so other actors how to sing the, so- the lyrics of the songs so they could all sing it for the movie. And the reality is they barely sing it in the movie. They didn't need to teach them the whole fucking yeah, song, but they two did scenes, Two scenes. Yeah. They, they sing it twice. Yeah, same part of it. Yeah. Um, Sean Young, uh, she is from Blade Runner. That was the most notable thing that she's from. Um, or not most notable, but like big, a uh, big note in her career. Did not like working with Bill Murray on this. Really? Yeah, but the gripes I didn't like. She didn't like how he improved and stuff like that. And I'm like, that is what he's meant to do. This is a comedy it, with it, Bill Murray, Harold uh, Remus, and John Candy, and you're upset they're improving. That entire scene where they're talking about where they're from and why they joined the army in the platoon is all improv. Yeah, you mentioned that. You said this entire scene is improv. Yeah. And so, I'm like, just as long as you give... See, this is what I like about people like Bill Murray. It's like, here's how you're supposed to be. Here's your, your general consensus. Throw in these hot words. Mm-hmm. Go. And he just is like, okay. And he goes. Well, and, I, and sometimes some of the best stuff comes from improv. Sometimes we get some weird shit from improv. Um, Kevin Smith has always been a very much, you, you do what the script says director but to be fair he was a guy that did if it was learning went to school for it it was art to him yada yada no improv and then he slowly as he worked with more actors real actors no offense to the people from clerks but oh, yeah, no. at the time they were just kids friends. and friends they weren't actors yet now they're actors but at the time they were just their people are all new to this um i mean some of the people in that were actors because he actually put up casting calls at like the local coffee shop and stuff like that um it was actually really interesting and um, so as he starts working with more actors, he starts finding, okay, fine, I guess you can improv. But you have to do what's on the script first. Do what's on the script and then improv. And I think that's a great way to work it. Give Bill Murray the script and be like, Here's this. I, give me a take of you doing the lines and then give me 10 takes of you doing you. You know? Yeah. I, I want to know what you come up with. Fuck, we got the we got only a quarter of what Robin Williams did for Aladdin. Yeah. From where I said, a lot of it would make the movie R-rated. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, of course. But at the same time, you think, you know, someone who has that sort of, of you know, genome theory type mm-hmm. of nonsense, but in comedian form, then it's like you, you have something that could just create itself. Mm-hmm. You literally have it. And then when the animators are like, we're just working off of what we hear. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, that's great. And it creates that, that mark of inspiration where that genome theory brain well, and from especially the... With- from the voice builds yeah. the character. Especially when you have someone like Murray who can do all the impressions. Yeah. And, I mean, just look at Aladdin 3. They put even more of his impressions in that movie than they did in the first Aladdin. Yeah. Um, I don't remember 3. <laughs> 3 was King of Thieves. It's the one he came back for because he did not do 2. Actually, the voice of Homer Simpson did 2. Really? Yeah, you hear a lot of Homer in it. Um, <laughs> oh, and the reason was is because he had a feud with Disney. Disney didn't exactly treat him well. Uh, Rob, uh, Robin Williams, there was a lot of like they took advantage of him and shit like that. Uh. Um, which is a sad thing. I, I heard about a lot. Um, Warner Brothers tapped him for Joker in '89 Batman, and he got real excited. And it turned out it was just to make Jack Nicholson jealous to get Jack to agree because Jack was very much like, I don't know if I want to do this. And then when they said, we got Robin Williams, though. Yeah. Oh. And then turn around and told Robin, like, we don't need you. So it happened to him a couple times. It was rather upsetting. Um, but uh, God, an alternate universe where Robin Williams plays the Joker. I think he could have done good. Um, I don't know that the character would have been as dark as it is. I think it would have been a lot more Cesar, Cesar Romero Joker, you know, Batman 66 Joker. But I think it still would have been good. Um, I, I, I do know, though, that... Uh, they don't normally have voice actors in the same room, which I think hinders a lot of what we what we get. I think you get. I mean, you're getting it again now, thankfully, with like uh, Animaniacs. You got Pinky and the Brain working together mm-hmm. in the same room. Uh, the Warner Brothers and his more sister in the same room. Dot dot. <laughs> um, but uh, you you got it with Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy on like the Arkham games a little bit, um, but. There was like one day where they did let the Aladdin actor come into the room and he almost ruined several takes because he's just laughing his ass off at Robin. Robin is just killing him and making him just lose it. Um, but to show like the difference in uh, uh, in things, 
there's only really a, a like a small percentage of Monsters Inc. where Billy Crystal and John Goodman are actually in a room together, and everyone says that is better than the entire movie, like the like voice acting wise, like the moments where they actually got to play off of each other is way different and way better than when they were in two different booths, not seeing each other, not hearing each other, just delivering lines from a script. Because essentially, that's what a lot of it comes down to is you're reading. Yep. Yeah, you have half emotions. Yeah. You're given how you're supposed to feel and how you're supposed to deliver that line, and that's what they do. So Billy Crystal does well at, at you know, raising his voice and getting, like, frustrated at people. Mm-hmm. While John Goodman just goes, easy, easy, you know. Um, back to the, the Kevin Smith thing real quick. Um, when it came to, uh, the improvs, there's one improv line I know of, and it's the scene in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back where the, um, they're trying to convince the security guard to let them go. And he's like, what if, uh, I make him blow me? (laughs) And he's like, all right, fine. The, the line was something completely different. (laughs) And... They did the line, and the actor's like, "I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do my line. I, I come up with a line. I'm just gonna do it." And he just goes, "But when you're done, say, why? What a lovely tea party!" <laughs> and then it immediately that. destroyed Kevin, and it made the movie. <laughs> I don't remember that scene, but I, 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 I love that movie. So I'm um, trying to think it. of what you would know the actor from, other than the one thing I don't want to mention. <laughs> um, I'm not to mention he's Batman in Batman: Brave and the Bold. Really? So that's the one that plays the security guard and comes up with, why, what a lovely tea party. Yeah. Oh, um, he's in the Drew Carey show. He's one of the friends. He's the one that's not Ryan Stiles. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. So he's the security guard in that. Okay. He's also I the don't... one that fumbles the line, Mr. Vanderbeek. <laughs> and I'm like, what is that? Just call him Vanderbeek. <laughs> Mr. Vanderbeek. <laughs> hey, you're the guy that fucked the pie. <laughs> that movie is great with one-liners. Uh, but all right, end of news. Uh, oh, what tonight's movies. So uh, we had to call a bit of an audible. There was an ordering issue with a movie that is not on any streaming services or available for digital purchase. But whatever. Um, we're going to do comic book movies today, but we're doing something a little different. I've had this one in my back pocket for a while now. Comic book movies that aren't about superheroes. Comic book movies that don't involve any form of power or anything. It's just one hell of a story that was told in the graphic novel format. Uh, Road to Perdition, which is essentially a mob movie. Okay, cool. And History of Violence. Uh, I can't give you much on that one. Um, what I will leave it as is Road to Perdition has Tom Hanks, and uh, History of Violence has uh, uh, Vito uh, Vigo Mort- uh, Mortison. Mortison? Mortison. Mortison. So, um, both really great movies, and I think you'll enjoy them both. Okay. There, and it's a more of a serious night, though. We did comedy last. We're doing serious this week. I have no fucking clue what we'll do next week. Probably we'll do the, uh, what tonight was supposed to be. Okay. So, end of the news. End of the news. Well, sort of. Uh, oh, reviews. The, reviews. Reviews. Uh, over the past week, I've been playing uh, Pokemon Shield uh, for the Switch, and I've been thoroughly enjoying it, and it's it's a bit of a stagger from an old-style game to now, because now you have, like, raids. You've got big areas that you can explore and actually see the Pokemon pop out of the grass and be like, I need to catch one of those. Or, oh, that that one is something I, you know, can utilize a little better in my team. It's... You have Dark Souls copyright infringement. Hmm? The dog. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Jeff. Yeah, a little bit. Hmm. If I if I had gotten sword, I probably would have named him Sif. Now think about it. But I digress. I'm two and a half gyms in. Um, the areas are very varied as it normally would be. Um, battles are similar, easy. Uh, already have six legendaries. What what, what team are you running? Uh, right now, I'm gonna be doing. I'm leaning toward fighting steel but i'm having a hard time getting the pokemon because i think i have to go a little bit further in so okay. but as of right now i've got as i said six legendaries because wonder trading is a thing there's people that are distributing hacked pokemon mm. so i already have a shiny regi ice i have a shiny um it's a hyper beast i don't know what, what it's called um but i've got uh, a shiny moltres and I'm just like, 
a little game breaking. Those are going to stay off to the side. Only ones that I catch or start at level one will be what I'm actually going to use party. for this and until Elite Four. So I uh, my <clears throat> first game was yellow. I came late to the game. I didn't get uh, red or green blue. or yeah, red or blue. Um, so my first game was yellow. Mm-hmm. And then my next one wasn't until Sapphire, the first Sapphire, not Omega. Okay. And that was my last game, too. Oh. Um, and then I start dating Lauren, and she plays them on the DS, and then the 3DS when I got her that. Um, and so she, she's up to where, where the last one for 3DS was, which was... Uh, Sun and Moon. Sun and Moon, so I think it's Moon. Um, and she's telling me about all, all these cool things and whatnot. And, I, and you know, throughout the, the beginning of our relationship... I've got my friend James, who also is a huge Pokemon fan mm. and plays Pokemon on his DS and whatnot. And they're talking about shinies. And I'm like, the fuck is a shiny? I had never heard about shinies. Yeah. I didn't know anything about shinies. And to think they got introduced in the last game you played. Yeah. I didn't know there shit so, about them. They were, un- they were so uncommon back then. But now they're, they're a little bit easier to try and manipulate the system to go. Well, and then they're talking about play styles. They're talking about types. They're talking about how they handle different gyms and whatnot. And they're having this great conversation back and forth. And I'm like, do you mean you guys don't just max out your Pokemon and just beat the crap out of things? Yeah. Because <laughs> I didn't. Because playing it as a kid, I definitely didn't understand. But I never read the things. Doing dyslexic. Like, why don't you just skip all the conversations? I never really got the core of how Pokemon worked until I was an adult. And so I didn't go in thinking you know water type versus fire type and you know ground and normal and all that shit i went in like oh <laughs> pikachu didn't take him down da- take down that fucking rock type of course he didn't um let me go and make him stronger let me make him so strong that it says not very effective and we see the hp go you <laughs> and that's how i played pokemon because i didn't understand and i never bothered to learn i just figured not not strong enough yet so my Pokemon experience was very weird compared to most people's. Um, I did have the cards, though. I did a lot with the oh, cards. I, I had and I lost, a lot, I too. Show. I think Grandpa still has my binder somewhere. Uh, my mom had an ex that uh, stole my set when we moved out. Um, and so I had to start my collection over again. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I've, I've still got a early 2000s collection. I haven't added anything to it in years, but it's in the closet. It's in those sets. So... Um, I do still, I think, have the VHS tape for the first movie and for 2000 with the Mewtwo card and the, the chip for 2000 of the bird Pokemon. I don't know what mm. the fuck it was called. But oh, oh No, that wasn't the one. Lugia? I think it was Lugia. Yeah, mm. it was the white and blue one. Yeah. Yeah. So One of the two. Now, looking at these reviews, do you agree with what, you know, GameStop, the master of the stock world, and uh, Best Buy, Target, and Google users say? Yeah, uh, sadly, we're not going to be talking about GameStop stock. Ugh. I listened to a podcast today that talked about it, and the guy called it GameSop. Sop. Sop. Like 15 times. Yeah. <laughs> I was ready to reach through the mic, uh, the headphones, and just be like, stop! Uh, um, I do agree with it. Do you like I, his ratings? Yeah, I like I like these three. I don't know why Target got such a low <laughs> one, but so far I'm having a really good time. A lot of really interesting uh, costume pieces. I wish I can get rid of my backpack, just because I know why you need the backpack, but the backpack is like half of your body <laughs> and i'm just like eh. how customizable is your character in this um pretty good pretty fair view um it it gives you a lot of very interesting colors uh i popped over to pokemon go just to take a quick peek they had a gucci stuff to wow. pokemon go and i was like it was all free and i was just like okay and you put on the the freaking the fade away hat and it it looks good. I was like, <laughs> what the fuck? Why, I mean, it's a way why... for the company to make money and it's a way for another company to advertise. It makes sense. It's, it's not an intrusive advertisement. It isn't. It's just very interesting to hear Gucci in Pokemon. Yeah. Then again, Louis Vuitton in League of Legends. True. Like, it's so... Do you see the chat? Yeah, I see the chat. <laughs> uh, she told me the story once before. Uh, Sox had bred a shiny Charmander once and uh, Wonder traded it away for a normal Pumpkaboo. Um, damn. Like I said, I didn't understand Chinese for the longest time, so that sucks, and I'm sorry, but to me, it would be like, oh, well, that, okay. Um, the problem would be is Charmander's my favorite of the starters for the original th- uh, three or four, if you're talking, you know, I've Pikachu got, being added. I've got three ready to go. So, <laughs> like, I could. For instance, them. I don't play Pokemon Go anymore. I fell out of it again, but there are two Charmanders in my fucking account. One of them's regular, and one of them's wearing a Pikachu hat. 
and the one with the Pikachu hat will never get any stronger because they kind of dwarf those ones. They're really only meant for like trade value and whatnot. And I'll never trade them because he's Charmander and I think he's adorable with that little fucking hat on. <laughs> My favorite Pokemon eats iron. I don't know. Agron. Um, I don't follow the manga or the anime anymore. So whenever I hear about some of the new stuff and so with some of these... I get a little like, what the fuck? Um, I didn't like the <laughs> primal thing or the. Um, uh, I thought Alolan, Alolan was weird because I I got some of the Alolan stuff. You're pulling up the Meowth, aren't you? Mm hmm. Have you seen what it fucking evolves into, too? Yep. That's not the Alolan. That's yes, this that is, one. No, this is uh, Geller. This is the current. This is Geller region. Oh, that's Geller region? Yeah, this is Alolan. Alolan. Oh, okay. No, um, okay, I, yeah, I was talking about him. I didn't realize that was the, <laughs> the dirt cat. Okay, yeah, have you seen what he evolves into, though? Uh, I don't recall. See, yeah, pull up uh, his evolution. Oh, let me do Geller. I like some of the Alolan stuff, like, you know, uh, the Execute's neck grows longer because of, um... <laughs> Berserker! <laughs> That's what, uh, Lauren said. Uh, she made a uh, Berserker joke. Uh, and then... Long cat. Long cat is long. Long cat is long. Um, I, I got the whole, you know, the tree one, the, the execute, it, it grows longer because all the sun. I didn't expect that. All the sun and whatnot. But I, I didn't like um, some of the other ones because it was just like, oh, for instance, the Meowth, like, it's a slightly different color. Um, apparently, the uh, Ponyta Galar is just a fucking ripoff of My Little Pony, and there's probably bronies everywhere that are excited as shit about this. Um... <laughs> I, what it, this is what this is i mean it's a unicorn yep and it's clouds uh, instead yeah one thing i didn't like is when they added fairy type and they changed the, the type of past pokemon so they no longer work the same okay that one was hilarious i oh, thought that was pretty funny. That was pretty funny uh it's the um wheezing wheezing uh and i fucking love obstagoon I'm I'm yeah, halfway. The, the, yeah, the new one for him is pretty cool. Did they do it for his other color too, where he's brown? No, no, oh. no. It's just it, this is that region mm. specifically. Um, I didn't like the addition of the fairy uh, Pokemon just because they went through and changed the type of past Pokemon. Same thing with the dragon. Uh, when they went through, I got it that you know technically there were dragon Pokemon already. And so you wanted to give them their own type, but it changes how those Pokemon work now. Yes. And I didn't like that. Like, it should have just been a name when it came to the dragon one. Dragon type should not have affected Nate as much as it did. Same thing with fairy. Because now you're telling me that the last, you know, 20 years of Pokemon no longer works the way it did. It does, and but there's more to it now. There's, like, now instead of it just being fire type, now it's fire dragon or fire fighting. Yeah, but dragon does have an advantage over certain types and a weakness to certain types. Correct. That changes how that Pokemon worked in the past. So, for instance, what's uh, dragon's weak to fairy, right? Uh, I think that's what it is. I don't really know. Um, I love having the idea of having a pen pal in Pokemon universe and trying to explain that you pet <laughs> Zig Zig Moon evolved into a <laughs> balancer. <laughs> That's nice. Um, pull up what's Dragon Week 2. Uh, uh, but real quick, um, I pulled up a picture of the Slow King in Galarian region. region. This is cult. This is, yeah, this is very haunting. Yeah. But uh, what am I... Uh, uh, what, dra what is Dragon type Pokemon? What are Dragon type Pokemon Week 2? I think it's fairy. Uh, dude. Oh, wait. No, this is grass. I don't want that. No. Yeah. Um... There we go. So yeah, it's weak to fairy. Yeah. Uh, so now that's telling me that a uh, Gyarados is weak to a Jigglypuff. Yes. It doesn't make sense. It died. Uh, and you've also just changed. 20 years of shit, because how many times okay. have we seen people fucking wreck with Gyarados that now it's like, oh, but he's weak to half the fucking Pokemon out there now because we added a new type. Right. I get they're trying to keep the keep it alive, but some of that stuff shouldn't have changed how things affect it. should have just been a name. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and I mean, steel type, you gotta figure, you hit someone with a steel baseball bat, it's gonna <laughs> fucking hurt. It's gonna hurt. But what sucks is it only has so much in strengths and weaknesses. So... 
Eh. It's weird. Yeah. Um, I also don't like some of the anthropomorphic thing. Is that the word? Um, anthropomorphic. I, I don't creatures. like the the living ice cream or the living candle. Litwick okay. is also just fucking scary if you read the description. It oh. leeches off the fucking trainer. There's a lot of crazy ones that I've figured out, but uh, Litwick is. I, I like liquids. Litwick. Litwick. <laughs> So far, uh, as far as like you know, character and building and, and all that, um, there's a freaking uh, a teacup with it that has its tongue out, and I'm like, that's not misleading at all. There's one that's literally just an apple with a worm sticking out the back. You know, it, it's all these weird things that are are to be assumed normal, but aren't normal. Yeah, it's odd. Um, uh, Drifloom. Is also, some of them make me sad, like the pig one uh, that bounces. Uh, Spoink, yeah, if it stops yeah, bouncing. If it stops bouncing, it dies. Yeah. What the fuck, Pokemon? Um, chat says, to be honest, I'd uh, see... I'd see it more like the dragons are weak to fairy types because they're destructive, but even worse uh, when the fairy moves uh, addle their minds. I'm not saying I don't understand why they're uh, the, they're weak to them. I'm saying it steps on the toes of what has already happened. It, it, it shits all over the last 20 years of this industry. Uh, like, of, of its storytelling purposes and mechanic purposes. I'll, I'll concur That's my you. issue. I'm not saying it doesn't make sense. I'm saying... You, you don't want it to change that much. Yeah, you shouldn't create things that step on the toes of your past things. Okay. I mean, I, I get it, but at the same time... You're having at, we're at, what, 755 Pokemon now? Yeah. I also don't like pre-evolutions, because you're like, unless it's like something that was extinct, you're telling me we didn't notice that there was two little fucking other mice Pokemon running around this whole fucking time? That I, that that one I'll kind of give you. It's, it, it was a way to keep making money. And they aren't legendaries. If they're legendaries, fine. Okay, we didn't know they were there, because there's only one of them in existence. That's understandable. Oh no, these things are fucking everywhere. We just ignored them this entire time. It's cat breeds. Think of it like cat breeds. There are very specific cat breeds that can be made this way, and in different areas, they can become midgets, such as Scottish Bambinos. Folds. Yes. So think of it like that. Munchkins. Where in Kanto region, maybe only Pikachu exists, but over in Johto, that's where Pichu and, and that's how And that's how they sell it. But the, the problem is, is... As far as the typing, I'll concur with you. Yeah. That one's a little messed. But as far as having baby-type Pokemon... I, I will say maybe it is region locked as far as I guess it just it's it's weird to think that you know uh think that someone never said uh, never showed up to Kanto with one of those like as of that point maybe not planes trains and automobiles are a thing you're right <laughs> and boats so um why what were we looking at here oh uh just real quick Drifloon's uh Pokedex entry uh it tugs on the hands of children to steal them away however it gets pulled around instead. Yeah, that's it not... wants to take kids. Okay. Fucking... Uh, children holding holding them sometimes vanish. Jesus Christ, it's like the fucking Grindylow of Pokemon. Yeah, like Drifloon's a crazy. Minus the drowning. Yeah, no, it goes up. We all float down here. But yeah, no, th there's a lot of creepy Pokedex entries. A lot of creepy Pokedex entries. Yeah. I, I like what, what the chat just said. Um... Bloody customs officers between regions working hard to prevent pre-evolutions coming in. Like, yeah, what is it? Invasive species? Is it like the fucking pigeon in Australia that they're it, considering it, killing? It's illegal fruit. <laughs> it's illegal fruit. It's illegal fruit. <laughs> okay. By the way, what is with all the talks about eating Pokemon? Like, I get that they're animals and and we eat animals. Okay. In in the in the show, they had mentioned that there was cooked, or it was either the show or the manga, but even so, it was cooked Tauros. Yeah, and then where I'm like, yeah. people have tried to eat um, Magikarp, but he's mostly just bone and uh, scale, scale, or um, Slowpoke's tail gets cut off because it's a delicacy. It's just by the time he realizes it's cut off, the pain hits him. The new one's grown back. Yes, it's interesting. Yes. <laughs> Chat says the internet is just nasty. Trademarked. Yes. I mean, also got to figure, Wolo, there's your lamb chops. Yeah. It, it, you know, I get it. Yeah, I'm not vegan and I understand eating animals. It just seems weird when, you know, it's like, let me befriend this thing and then eat it. Yes. <laughs> that I don't agree with. <laughs> That's funny. That's fucking funny. Lamb chop. Yeah, lamb chop as, but oh, popcorn. Um... 
Yeah. Interesting. All right. Um. Like so that was your review. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was my review. It took a little bit, but yes. Uh, so far, so good. Two gems in. Hoping I can probably beat it by the end of this week. It's, it doesn't seem too too difficult. I'm just kind of wonder trading and, and wandering about. It, it's a very wanderful game. Mm-hmm. I don't mean to pun like that, but yeah. Mm. yeah. That was a bad pun yeah, it was. for you. All right, on to bigger, better news. Uh, Magic um, has a somewhat MMO, somewhat... Yeah, we talked about this in the past. We have. Uh, and the open beta begins on March 23rd. Yeah. Um, don't move on from this, though, because I have other magic news. Of course. I'm just using this as a... Scan my face. Scan my face. Uh, I'm just using this as a placeholder. Um, so, yeah, no. Uh, we we had talked about this a little bit, and um, I, I don't know. It, it's kind of magic meets Diablo, mm, you know. But this one doesn't, you know, throw it in your face that you have phones, don't you? <laughs> Um, I, I'm no longer mad about that. I'm, I, I'm it's, mad at, it's become a, a more of a meme. Yeah, I'm I, more mad that they said it, but I mean, at the same time, I'm like, when's it coming out? I kind of want it. <laughs> I won't get it because I'm not going to support talking oh, down shit. to your... Whoop. I'm not going to get it because I'm not going to support talking down to your consumers because you had a bad idea and they reacted Poorly. to your bad idea with negativity. The proper thing is to more be like give it a chance you know check it out you might like it don't worry we're working on other projects too we hear you not berate you because you don't like my bad idea (laughs) you know um but while while we're talking about magic uh so they've also got their um arena game uh sorry oh you're fine well we'll talk about that real quick yep uh yeah we'll go ahead and leave that one up so the um, Black Lotus card, um, very rare card. Um, how rare is, is rare from for Magic? Are we talking that there's like one of these in existence? There's or? maybe <laughs> 60, 70, maybe okay. a little bit more. Uh, this is one of the first first edition sets, mm-hmm. and like it doesn't showcase that it's first edition, but you can tell it is because. You you don't get that mark. You don't get that little first edition like a Pokemon card. But uh, back in '93, these were very uncommon. These were this this card itself is very strong. Okay. Just because it's add three mana to your pool. So for free. so it's a very important card for playing, and it's also a very rare card. Yes. What makes this one more even more rare is that this one is signed by the artist who actually passed away back in 2016. Um. Uh, it was uh, Christopher Rush. So this one is signed and sealed, and just sold at auction. Uh, I'm curious as to the person that you know had this, went through the trouble of getting it signed to, to sell it. I'm, I'm wondering if it was a goal to always sell it, or if this just didn't mean what it once meant to them, or if they were just in a hard spot. But um, pretty much, I'm sure that their their worries are kind of over financially, as this sold for. Five hundred eleven thousand one hundred dollars. Um, we've seen a couple things like this recently. Like we talked about the four hundred dollar um, uh, unopened first edition card uh, set uh, Pokemon, and uh, there was even um, another Pokemon set that went for like three hundred seventy five thousand. So we've been seeing these people that are dropping the big money on on these cards, and I guess I understand this one because it is signed and it is uh, a first edition, but. It, you know, it's one of those things like you better put that in a fucking case. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I mean, it ain't coming out of those PSA grade lockers. Yeah, like, this thing is airtight. And then put that inside like a fireproof box. <laughs> yeah, and then put that box inside of a bigger box. Do not mail it to yourself and smash it with a hammer. Smash it with a hammer. <laughs> uh, but no, I. It's a pretty card. Oh yeah, this, this if you if you just start off in uh, Magic the Gathering, you you gradually hear about this card and you're like how how rare is it oh you know one of these in just a regular run-of-the-mill penny sleeve just ran for like five grand and you're like what no way and you check it up and you're like oh yeah these things are expensive like let me see here let me let me see if any's going on ebay right now black lotus alpha the um suggested search was concerning but 
Three hundred forty nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. I don't ever trust eBay prices though. No. I've seen things put on eBay for outrageous fucking rates. No, but uh, if you take a peek, people are watching this. Yeah. You clicked on that one. I did seventy thousand. <laughs> I watch you per- like perfectly clicking that one. I didn't mean to. Um, this one's got nine grand as a oh. bid. Wow, three days left. With three days left, <laughs> I bid a dollar. <laughs> okay, how petty are you? That you're going to put a $9 uh, shipping. Or this one down here with $100 shipping. Uh, uh, this one I could probably see as um, insurance. You're getting $150,000 for it if someone buys it. Mm-hmm. You can fucking suck up the insurance on it yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, eBay has a form of insurance and it ain't a fucking $100. I don't know. I've bought and shit off of eBay. I don't want to talk about it. Shut up, broken. But, uh, yeah, this is the Black Lotus. This is what... All right. What's the highest Pokemon? Uh, what's the highest Magic card, and what's the highest Pokemon card? On Magic card, by all means. It's going to be the Lotus? It's going to be the Lotus. Uh, as far as Pokemon, it might... Sock says the shipping is the magic trick. Ha, ha, ha. I'm dying. Uh, just reverse the search, uh, reverse the filter to yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, lowest to highest. Highest to lowest. First, highest first. Three million dollars. Million dollars for the Holy Grail Pikachu Illustrator PSA nine mint most valuable Pokemon card. With now that many watchers. Jesus, we're in the wrong industry. We <laughs> we're gonna in. we're gonna start opening decks. <laughs> Open up packs. <laughs> Opening up pack upon pack upon pack. I mean, we can. I it it is now a lucrative business. I swear to God. Um, I mean, I, as a kid, literally. I kept my comic books. You know, I, yeah. I've got comic books over there. Hold on, keep talking. Okay. I mean, right now on Twitch, at this point in time, we have other Twitch streamers who are opening up their own individual packs and getting profit off of them. You got boards. <laughs> Those aren't boards. Well, I mean, bad so, panels. So, I bag and board my comics. I'm assuming I'm still showing up on chat. Yep. But I have Here, CDC let me, let me, sealed. Let me pop not back up. CDC, sorry. CGC sealed. Multiple CGC sealed. Let me get a good angle on that. This one's graded at a nice 9.6 near mint. It's almost impossible to get a 10 just because of shipping. Yeah. So, the yeah. lowest I have is a 2.5 because it's missing pages. But, at the same time, getting it boarded because of that. Because of what comic it is. Well, yeah. The missing page one that is uh, 2.5 is Amazing Spider-Man number 9. So. It's got age. Yeah. And then... And then I I, I hope somewhere down the line I, I want to get a couple things boarded just because... Yeah. It's not... It's not necessary. It's not, uh, that's what I was going to say. It's not cheap because you normally have to send multiples in if you want a good price. But it's not like, you know, sell a house expensive or anything. No. But what I was going to say is, as a kid, I took care of my comics. I was like, I love them. I don't want them to degrade. They might be worth something. My Pokemon cards went in little plastic sleeves that were inserted in fucking school binders. Penny sleeves, yes. The hell were we thinking? <laughs> Why didn't we think that this would be a thing? Although I do have a Pokemon trading book from the 90s with uh, values of cards. This is from uh, OG base set, $150,000 for a and Blastoise. Now, when they say these things sell at auction, um, is it always eBay, you think? Or do you think there's auction no, houses that take I, Pokemon cards serious enough to host them? I, I think they see the, the profitability in it because if you do sell it through an actual, like, an auction house... Mm-hmm. I'm sure that they're they're pretty much saying we get uh, oh yeah they get commission five to five to seven percent finder's fee mm-hmm. you know because we're the ones basically being your middleman we're going through Pokemon cards later tonight <laughs> okay we may buy we may be buying me that Tesla <laughs> that, that works <laughs> so that we can have it delivered in two years shit oh speaking dollars. of Tesla what's up um did you hear about uh, SpaceX shooting off that rocket yes did you hear about the satellites. I did not hear about the satellites. So the satellites were um, both, some of them were for Elon. Others were for other companies that were like, hey, let's let, let's rent space on your shuttle. It makes you not spend as much on the shuttle, save us money, yada, yada. 
Um, I was 130 satellites on it. Yeah. Or no, uh, wait. Or, I think it was 100. 100. 100 oh, anything over 100 is yeah, still. It, it set a record for like the most satellites launched up at once. Elon now has an internet based satellite company. The concept being beaming down internet to rural areas that don't have the fiber. He is like that crazy uncle that that rambles nonsense, but is actually meaning well. You're gonna love the name, Starlink. I like that. <laughs> um, so back over to this little thing though. To cards. Uh, yeah, uh, personal incarnation. Uh, this one just got a, I believe it just got a uh, a Redux not too too long ago. I think in Ravnica. Okay. But two point seven five million dollars. <laughs> oh, we were told by the chat to do eat, open all the packs. Um, I don't have packs to open, sadly. Yeah, I mean, we can get some packs over at fucking Target one of these days, I'm sure. <laughs> and we'll we'll open them up here in Twitch. Fucking because, Dollar Tree. <laughs> yeah, Dollar Tree. Why not? But um, like I'm I'm super keen on doing that because, as I said, on Twitch, people have been opening packs. Right, well, I'll open packs. The problem is, is I feel bad opening packs that I'm not gonna do anything with. Um, now we hear a lot about magic. So we've got this $2,750,000 card. We have the $3 million Pikachu. Mm -hmm. Is Yu-Gi-Oh worth anything? Um, I'm sure there's going to be, I felt like Yu-Gi-Oh Starlights. Was... I know there's Starlight cards. Um, it doesn't look like eBay gives a shit about the dashes. <laughs> yeah, but I do. I mean, if I got rid of them. This guy that? selling them. All of them for a million, it yeah, looks like. for the uh, Legend of Blue Eyes set. Wow. Uh, you remember everyone yelling at each other about Blue Eyes? I didn't White care. Dragon. I, man, I, I care more about Maha Velo. I didn't play Yu-Gi-Oh! when I was a kid, so everyone would be yelling at each other about that shit, and I'm like, bitch. Okay. I'm going to go read my comics and be the nerd you don't like. <laughs> so, I mean, there there is, and then there's certain starlights, I'm sure, that go for a little bit, that sell a little bit more frequently. So, like, if you buy a, a full booster box, mm -hmm. Blue Eyes, $75,000. If you open up a an entire set of the Blue Eyes stuff, you're probably going to get that 120 odd thousand if you, you know, grade it. Sock says Dark Magic Valkyrie all the way. Yeah. Um... Like, I'm sure there's a starlight up here somewhere. I've got all the sets that aren't worth anything. I've got Harry Potter cards, which, you know, now is just a curse word. Uh, <laughs> I've got uh, Marvel cards from the 90s when Marvel tried to get into the card game industry, and that didn't work. Um, I've got Spawn from when they did the Spawn animated series. Okay. I've got trading cards for Spawn. Um, I've got some adult cards you can't show on Twitch due to... <laughs> Due to reasons. <laughs> well, I've got the weird random shit that never ended up reaching any real collectability. No one gave a fuck about them. But they're mine and I love them. Okay. I mean, that's all anyone really gives a dang yeah. about. Is, you Wait, know. Go back up. I feel, like I've, I feel like I've seen that one in the wild. <laughs> this one? Exodia? Yeah, but not uh, non-holographic. Prob uh, prob probably. Probably, yeah. <laughs> I never owned the card, so it's not like I was like, oh, I once owned a $20,000 card. <laughs> I, no, I didn't own them. It wasn't my thing. Obviously, I was wrong to not have owned them because I could be, you know, putting, you know, my non-existent kids through college. Uh, okay, so for the full Starlight set, $24,000. $10,000 for the Starlight Rare Chamber Dragon Maid, which I've I've seen uh, that person that I was telling you about that opens Pokemon cards. He opens up Yu-Gi-Oh! from time to time, and he, he gathered a couple Starlights from it. He just opened them to open them. Yeah. He just, he's there for the thrill. See what he, he got. He, he uh, has a partnership with, I believe, uh, G Fuel, and he uses that money just to open up packs, and then he puts all the cards together and sells those packs independently. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, um, that's really interesting. So the the chat says, I think I heard the old Furbies are selling for a lot. I don't know why they're literal demons. Um, I own one Furby, and I don't know what happened to it. It was just. Not there one day, and I'm pretty sure it was because my mother probably thought that thing was the demon. It was a demon and got rid of it. <laughs> probably. Um, because I don't think she's the one that bought it for me either. Have you see what they look like with their fucking skin off? Yeah, it's terrifying. What is this? Uh, this is just a starlight I wanted to take a look at. Like, look at how well, pretty. It is a pretty card. I mean, and the art on any of these, Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, Magic, Pokemon, should never be, like, undersold. The art is amazing on all of these. Some. 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 Okay. Yeah, there's definitely goofy bad art, but I'm saying like they care about what they're doing. Like they hire real artists or not. I mean, what are you gonna do with that Pokemon though? Yeah. Like, no. 
I'm not. It's I'm just... not saying that that you know. Um, I don't think Spoink is the problem. Uh, I don't think the card art is the problem. I think the the muse yeah, of no. Spoink is the problem. Um, that one's cool. Do you think so? Yeah. Oh, you okay. don't think that Grunball is cool? Nah. I mean, it's always been kind of a goofy looking. Meh. You nah, know. Meh. Uh, there's there's one there's one Pokemon that card that like... <laughs> someone's selling that one for a penny. Yeah. Four twenty five shipping. Uh, reverse hollows don't really go for a lot. Reverse hollows are just oh hey it's shiny yay. Um, but yeah, pay four dollars twenty six cents. That's not too bad. But then again, this one's cheaper. Oh, Sox says I remember dead ass crying as I handed my best cards over after a four keeps duel as a kid. Um, that never would have happened. My mother would have kicked my ass for yeah. playing a four keeps duel. Um, the the real pain would have been, you know, her reaction to finding out I just took the, you know, X amount of money she spent on Pokemon cards and just handed them away. Yeah, no. Um, I actually had the rollout battle map. Yeah, I, I, I had the folded up one, but um, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. The nineties, what a time when people wanted, you know, thin pieces of paper. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, have you seen the guy? He's got a TikTok, and that's how I saw it. That has the entire original Pokemon run of cards framed and sealed mm -hmm. in a specialized frame so that they, they're protected from light, they're protected from you know water and whatnot. It's right. hanging on his wall. Yeah, okay. It's fucking it's gorgeous. It's just slapped on his wall. Yep, in mm -hmm. his office. He had a custom he had to have the frame custom made. Alright, back to back to news. And this is still uh in the, the card area though, because Magic the Gathering Arena uh just hit Three days ago. Um, now, it's in early access on uh, Android devices. Um, it's free to play, uh, but is pretty much being reported that if you want good cards, you're going to be spending some cash. Like, you're not able to really build a good deck with this. And it's Magic meets Hearthstone. Magic beats Gwent. It's mobile Magic the, uh, uh, magic the Gathering. Um, the, the big problem is... is with the other ones, you can get good cards and you can achieve things without paying. The problem here is, are you going to be able to do the same on this? So far, it's not really seeming like it. Um, it's still early, um, but if if you're only three days in and you're already complaining about drops, that, that's not a good sign. They may have to tweak their format a bit. Yeah, hopefully events pop in and, and we get some Planewalker style. Yeah, so... Yeah. Um, one can hope. That's it on trading card news, though. Hey! Huh. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, we touched on it very little because there wasn't much touch on uh, the Lord of the Rings Gollum game. No, it's um, even less. So, yeah. Uh, it's been delayed to 2022. Um, they released like an image of him sneaking around Excuse me, sneaking around. I just, I don't. It, it'll let you play through the story of Middle Earth's uh, most unfortunate hobbit, is how uh, they're putting it. Um, but I, I don't want to just sneak around. I don't. What is he gonna do? Eat a fish and throw a rock at you? Like, what is the point of this game? I don't know. I have no clue. I. I like Gollum as a character. Yeah, as a but side it, character in uh, Shudu of Wa, all that nonsense. I would even read his story. But you know, but right I mean, now, having to play it, I don't. I don't think that he's. I don't think that he's worth the time and effort to put into a video game. Sox says, "I mean, development time is precious." Um, as part of the delay, though, uh, the company. Uh, uh, Diabolical Entertainment announced that it is partnering with uh, Nacon uh, to publish the game. The two companies decided to join forces to ensure that the game will meet the expectations of fans of Lord of the Rings and fully uh, leverage the power of the uh, new generation of consoles. Uh, the universe will uh, be faithfully represented uh, thanks to the partnership with Middle Earth Enterprises, the company that holds the adaptation rights to the series, of, uh, series by J.R.R. Tolkien. Um, which I find it interesting that they're like, we're going to honor it by working with them, but we totally made the character look the way it looks in um, the, the movies. movies, which is fine. He looks great in the movies, but they did not 
do their own player at all. It's 100 percent the way he looks in the movies, and honestly, they owe Warner Brothers some money. Um, a new line. So the, yeah, they say you play as Gollum as you uh, as he seeks out the One Ring. Um, we know he's not going to get it. <laughs> like, well, it makes me wonder when it would be. Would it be after he loses it, or because? It's unbeknownst to us that this little story, because it's only the, the telling of after he loses it. It's to... got to be after he loses it. Well, hold on. After he loses it could be the first time he loses it. Because who knows? Maybe he could get it back before losing it a second time just to be a weird story. No, it's got to be. It's got to be after he loses it the first time, because without the ring, his aging is going to start to become a problem. Um, My thought process is it's going to be after Bilbo gets it. Because if you think about it, he's trying to find Bilbo. And him, him trying to find Bilbo for several years is how he gets caught by uh, the Witch King's followers. And they're able to get the information out of him that Bilbo has it. And that's how they know to look in the Shire and why the ring's then given to Frodo. And Frodo is told, get the fuck out of here. Because they're coming to the Shire for it. Right. Because he knew where it was. So I'm assuming it's going to be him figuring out where it is. Um, it will involve plenty of climbing and sneaking around as he ventures through some of the most dangerous parts of middle earth. The players will uh, have the chance to explore the gentler side of Smeagol as well as the harsher, more uh, obsessive Gollum. Uh, and they'll even be able to push the Hobbit towards one side or the other. Um, it will release on the PlayStation 4, 5, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, Xbox Series X. Obviously, it'll probably get the uh, S release as well. And Windows sometime in 2022. I It just doesn't sound like a game to me. I, I We need gameplay. If we get some gameplay, we might have something a little bit more substantial. But as of right now... But what's it, the gameplay going to be? I don't know. Like, legitimately, like, as a fan of the franchise, without changing... The character, as of right now, I don't know. What do you do with this? Like, you climb, you eat fish, and you throw rocks. And, and you freak out when someone puts a rope on you. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. I'm going to fight you over bread. <laughs> That's fine. That bread will feed you for a day. All right. Um, moving on. You need to transition? I, I'm going to transition. Transition. I'm tra- Damn, get on it. I didn't know I'm you gonna, were ready to you know move what? over yet. That's it. That's what I'm doing with the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to build a replacement for you. No. <laughs> It'll probably do better. <laughs> All right. Destiny. Uh, we already talked about Destiny a little bit. We um, did. And I'm going to talk on Destiny in kind of two parts here. So one, no, none of you know this because I have not posted anything because I have been sucked into a void. I got an Xbox Series X. Meow. Um, I'm the only person that has socks. Um, so I got Xbox Series X. I'm loving it. Destiny loads in a split second. I have no time to go pee, for, uh, pee anymore. Good. Uh, I have officially had to get the catheter. Um, <laughs> so that's what that blood was. Yes. No. Uh, um, it, it's, it's super fast. It loads really quickly. Luckily, Destiny doesn't really load you into the shit uh, too much. So you're able to still take your breaks as you need for a game that officially can't be paused. Um, but uh, I played a little bit of... Um, Beyond Light, the beginning of that. Um, interesting story, interesting new abilities that I think are just temporary, not permanent, but I'm liking it. So, the um, other Destiny news that we have here, though, um, is gone. <gasps> Uh-oh. Oh, wait. Here it is. Oh, yeah, you wrote that one down. Bungie has uh, done their weekly blog post as they normally do. Um, we are getting uh, a bunch of new stuff uh, starting February 2nd. Um, one of the things is Trials of Osiris is coming back. That's actually the biggest part of this. Um, th- we are getting rewards pools that will change for Season 14. Um, they're saying that uh, a lot of the shift is going to be easy. Um and we're getting things like light launch, uh, uh, getting things because of the light launch and stuff like that. Um, but there's a lot of talks about stuff not until March, which is a little confusing when you're launching the season in February. So, um, so they're saying stick around for plenty of loot. Um, and this is going to kind of force the quick end of season 13. Um, 
There's not much to tell you other than uh, Trials items power levels will be 1360 uh, As where the previous cap was 1260 set in season 11 uh, So be able to uh, use some old Trials weapons uh, Just until the end of season 13 um, But depending on how the max level works I don't know if they're going to up those like grandfather them in and up them or if you're gonna have to find all new variations of those because that's one of the problems i'm going through right now my some of my guns now that i'm back into playing can no longer be increased they have reached the level cap that they were previously at despite my light level going up because of the beyond light update and the season 11 update and season and season 13 updates my gear can go higher just not those specific ones I already had. So I have, for instance, a cape that I love the way it looks, but now it's a little low for my character, but I can't rank it up any higher because it's already reached its max. I have to basically find that fucking cape again. And then that one will be fine to level up. Hopefully. I mean, yeah, or no. If there. I find it in the wild... It'll already be up there. It'll be it'll be higher, and I'll be able to push it to a, its new max. The question is, is you have your collection. Everything you ever found, you have a book of, and you can spend resources to get them. Right. Question that I have that I have not tested yet is, and, you know, it's also going to be a question with the new Trials of Osiris and the new level cap, um, that uh, if we... The question is, if we use our collection to get an item we like the aesthetic of, hmm. can that item still be upped? Because right now, that's kind of what's happening. It's I'm having to sacrifice either power or aesthetic. And it's like, well, obviously, you want to sacrifice aesthetic because power means you do better in the game. But I'm doing fine in the game other than... <laughs> okay, so me and my one fire team member uh, went in against the first boss of Beyond Light. Okay. 50 plus deaths later, we finally beat her. Do you feel like you need more people or? Uh, well, our light was a little low going in for what that was. It did tell us what the suggested light was. We were under it, but we weren't that far under it. More people would have helped because of more classes and whatnot. I just kind of got my ass handed me repeatedly and it kind of sucked. And I think a lot of that does have to do with I need to fix my gear. I do fine in regular battles, but I'm not doing fine in, in, in the boss battles. But Trials of Cyrus is back. I know that's big for Destiny fans, and I think they're going to love it. Um, and I think they're going to hate it, because most likely something's going to get dwarfed somewhere and or nerfed somewhere. and um, People are not going to be happy. Yeah, we're going to be continu continuing to be confused. But hey, we're on the one of uh, the most famous moons of Jupiter um, that is in like every form of uh, media ever. Um, and it's frosty, and we're punching shit. Well, I'm not a titan. I don't punch shit. I'm shooting shit. I would like to punch shit. I'm a hunter. But I don't play Destiny. I don't know what the chat's talking about. Uh, so with our with our Twitch stream, there's a little clickable thing that you can click. Oh, we got can... the... Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. It gives it gives little tiny prizes that you can redeem toward things that well, I'm, I've been working on, but it, it's not well implemented for podcasts. Yeah. It's it's meant for gaming. It, it's meant for gaming. Um, So... What he's talking about, uh, what, what's being talked about is there's a little treasure chest next to the chat. Um, anyone that uses Twitch probably understands this. Okay. Uh, you click on it, you basically get points. Uh, the points are rewarded for watching, following, subscribing, all that stuff. Um, the more time you watch, the more points you get. They're calculated, but the treasure chest is kind of random. And it's just for you to be able to claim things like our emotes and stuff like that. We only have one emote right now. Um, but we're allowed to... The more people are here, the more we're able to put out there for you guys. Correct. So, um, it'll be something that grows as the channel grows. Yes. So. But speaking hey. Of, speaking of growing, yeah. Uh, just took a quick glimpse on how quick things have loaded. And Hitman did load quick. Yeah, so um, the Hitman... Uh, I've got news about this too, though. Um, not, this isn't just it loading quick. Oh. I load quick though. Yeah, it loaded quick. Um, so Hitman Three is out. It's been out for what about a week? A about over a week. About. Um, and uh, I'm enjoying it. I haven't played any of the three levels though because they added stuff to the levels from one and two, and so I've been going back and playing some of my favorite levels, doing the new missions, like levels I had previously 
maxed or almost maxed. I'm doing the new stuff. Uh, the game's beautiful. The game works well. Runs super quick on the Xbox. The only thing I'm having an issue with is I keep disconnecting from the Hitman server. And it's like, you're disconnected. Retry connection. I hit retry and it immediately connects again. Happens once every couple of hours. Better than every hour. On yeah, hour. it's just a weird thing. And I don't think it's on my end. I think it's on IO's end. Um, but there's a streamer out there. He streams here on Twitch. I'm trying to find his name real quick. Oh, we do. Uh, RT Game. The Irish streamer. Um, he spent several hours on one map, knocking everyone unconscious and dragging their bodies to the freezer for safekeeping. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of RT. Um, he uh, even did a uh, clown costume. Uh, I forget what the map is. I want to say it's a stadium of a sort, but uh, he goes through the entire thing just as a clown, and so it's on the hardest difficulty but he has to stay in the clown costume and he has to complete it um there's some really interesting things out there that people do um the freezer one was great um if you go and just check out rt gamers uh uh twitter which is rt gamer crowd um there's an image of him in the clown costume standing in the middle of the freezer completely full of bodies uh it took him six hours 41 minutes and 48 seconds and none of them are dead they're all just unconscious he didn't kill anyone but it's awfully cold in there it is awfully cold in there i think he's hoping for cryogenics so uh, <laughs> the the world of hitman is really interesting and it brings out some really interesting content with its goopiness so, uh go ahead and move on to the next thing you got it boop Hey, I don't have much on this. Did you like Skate? I like Skate. Skate is very funny just because it had, on top of pretty okay Skate controls, it even had, you know, breakable bones, um, a, an entire game mode dedicated to it, um, pretty okay story of, you know, getting big in a, in a place where getting big is kind of hard. It's already oversaturated, so you've got to do something that's personal bigger yeah you got to do something that's personalized and i'm like that's that's a good story it's like people live here people skate all the time do something impressive so the um interesting thing about skate is so skate three did okay it was right. all quiet yeah and then it came right back because of streamers on or not streamers but let's players on youtube right um let's players on youtube started playing it doing all kinds of things um I will refrain from giving credit to a specific YouTuber on that. Um, but it became big, it became huge enough that the game was actually put back into production. EA actually revived a dead game's production to bring it back uh, because there was such a high demand for it. Um, and they've officially started working on 4. Now, 4, I don't think has any official art. So this art is from uh, bosshunting.com um out there in uh, australia um it was the nicest thing we could find that was skate because most articles are just using like skateboards and wheels um but they have announced that they officially are working on skate 4 and have a development team um and so if you go on to uh, ea's website um they're doing it through full circle uh, which is headquartered in vancouver so it's coming from canada who i do believe also did the previous skate games if i remember correctly um, because they worked with a lot of actual skateboarders to come out and have like record lines and stuff like that. So yeah, they're uh, doing full circle uh, um, development. Uh, so you've got Daniel McCullen, uh, um, formerly the general manager of Xbox Live at Microsoft, who's going to be leading it. Okay. Um, That's okay. Wow. Yeah, he had production roles in things like Forza and some of the first party Connect games. All right. So, well. First part's all right. Second part's uh... I say what you will about the Connect. I enjoyed it. I own one for the 360. I own one for the Xbox One. They're fun. The problem more lies in the clearing Force. out your whole fucking house yeah. to be able to play it. And that's a problem you run into with any of these things. The PlayStation VR, Oculus Rift, HTC Vibe. Unless you're going to play something with just the helmet on your head and using a controller... I mean, the Quest no longer needs all that. The Quest just needs an open space. You can play it anywhere, just as long as three things. One, you can uh, tell it how far you are to a wall or to a you know closest object. 
You still need room to move around is the is my point. I'm saying they all require movement. Otherwise, you're sitting there with a helmet on your head and playing with a controller. Yes, okay. Which seems like an awful expensive monitor to me. I I don't understand playing things like Doom, Skyrim, uh, Fallout on it. It's literally buying a two plus hundred dollar thing to play a regular game. You're right. Because I think, I think the Quest still goes for... Uh, I'm just, you know, the $200 price tag works for the PlayStation VR. I'm just wanting to see. Uh, 480. Yeah. So, I, I'm, I get it for playing the things that that's meant for. Yes. I don't get it for playing other stuff. And all I'm saying is, what complaint is there about the Kinect other than you need to clear out the room, which you have to do for all these, and that sometimes the content wasn't that great, but I think that came from the fact that other people didn't want to get into that market. The big ca- gaming companies still don't really get into that market. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot out there, and there are going to be more probably in the, in the next year and a half that are made that are going to be just as cheap, especially when um, Lenovo's glasses tech popped out not too too long ago. I mean, that there's no way that could support VR. That's just ha- projecting three monitors for you. I think... I think it has potential. You got to figure if it can project those three, what's what's stopping it from pushing something that's already being viewed on your PC? That's graphics, right? And if it's putting it out, and this is just an output, but also if this is just an output, then it's not sending anything back, so it's not getting the head turns. I mean, gyroscopes aren't hard. Eh, gyroscope wouldn't be that hard. Either way. My, uh, I'm not saying there's a problem with VR. I'm saying that the connects, the gripes people had with the connects, are gripes you can make about Any. all of the VR platforms. You're right. And while the connect wasn't VR, and I think that's the thing that hurt the most was the fact that it wasn't a VR. Yes. It wasn't right here, so people were upset. Yes. The reality is you can hook up most of these to the the Xbox if you're crafty enough. Yeah. Um, I just I don't think there's any, I don't think there's enough content to be consumed for vrs to justify their price tag their price tag is justified by the hardware but i have to justify spending that much on that hardware to not be able to to like i need something to consume with it i did buy the playstation vr okay and the biggest problem i have is the games are overpriced and there's really nothing out there that really interests me no arizona sunrise is fun for a little bit yeah i like arizona and then it gets kind of boring um I mean, a lot of the games are vastly. What's the runtime? Can you pull the runtime for the Arkham VR? Uh, Arkham VR. Yeah. How long to beat? Uh, but Sox did raise up something interesting of uh, horror games in VR. You got to figure that type of immersion you can't get with just you know turning off the lights and looking at a screen. If you're fully immersed, headphones. You're telling the- me that a horror game can't scare the crap out of you without a VR. No, I didn't say that. I okay. said it, it immerses more. I'm, I'm not saying that they're not immersive. I'm saying they're $300 for immersion. Mm. If you have the money to spend. Yeah. So 2.5 hours for a game that still sits at around a $30 price tag on PlayStation because they'll only drop the price once a sale. They won't permanently drop the price. Right. So a $200 headset. $30 game. That's $30 it. game for two and a half hours. I've never bought it. I mean, if it's on a good enough sale, I'll buy it. But there's no fucking way I'm paying thirty dollars for two and a half hours of gameplay. That, yeah, that makes it's sense. just not fucking happening. And that's how all the VR games are. That's right. All the VR games are very little fucking content because they spend all their time working on making it fucking work for the VR that they don't really put time in anything else. That yeah, you were correct. And it's it's the consumer's bait of you can be in the game now. You okay, know, but is the, the game 90s. worth being in? No, no, I'm just saying it's the bait. Yeah, the other thing uh, Sock says is Connect was an excuse uh, to kick your siblings, though, question mark. Um, yeah, kind of. The, 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 the defense I'll take for the Connect is the Connect was much more about getting up and moving than the PlayStation shit ever was. The, what was it? Just Dance and what was the other big one? There was another Fruit Ninja one. was pretty Fruit big. Ninja was pretty big. Um, and, and while you can play those things on the PlayStation with the PlayStation VR and the connect took things to other levels by doing leg motion. Yeah. They could read your legs. Yeah. And I mean, it... and you've got that now with the, have you seen the switch exercise thing? 
the with the, the wheel the yeah and it's like squeezable so it makes you do like thigh workouts like Absolutely. that's the fucking shit that i i can get behind a lot more and those price tags are much smaller yeah uh, i think it's hold on i i think that uh uh fitness switch game i forget what it's called uh ring fit ring adventure fit. yeah ring fit and yeah. it's 80 bucks 80 bucks but i think it just comes with just the game and the game that. And, and and the ring um so i mean but the game so you figure a game on average is you know 60 60 yeah so 20 dollars for the ring 60 dollars for the game that seems fair that seems fair and there's people that are saying like this thing is a fucking workout yeah um the guy on tiktok that i i told you about that was doing the saitama um exercise mm-hmm. uh every day yeah he's he's already looking built like he went from you know us yeah to he's already starting to curve and define I've, i'm like holy shit that's it's it's only been 31 days i've done games on my connect that leave me going <sighs> God, afterwards give me, give me ddr again <laughs> i want to go back the problem is the, the at-home ddr has always sucked <laughs> oh no i would get a full fuck i would pay the 500 600 dollars to put one for a for I mean, a you could full metal probably thing. build one honestly you just need the program well i need the well the program is what would the, cost you the program and the the mat or the the base itself so i might as well just go out of the way i might as well i think it's fully do replacement parts i would rather I mean, just go out of the way i, I could get... fit that in my fucking garage no fucking problem the issue would be we live in a desert and my garage isn't air conditioned or insulated right. so <laughs> that would suck that would suck uh let's go ahead and move on to the next thing i just i don't remember how we got on this tangent oh fallout because we're we're in, us we're enjoying things oh we were talking about skate four and somehow it led to that <laughs> i don't know um skate four is going eventually yay oh the guy running it used to do connect games and That's he tried right. saying his career was bad because of connect I, and i argued I was, that it wasn't i was just arguing that the connect was just a weird forceful nature did you ever play gun uh gunstringer i have it gunstringer. you'll love it yeah. it's a marionette puppet that you control as he's like gunning down people, like other marionette puppets, is like you're playing the play, and mm-hmm. it senses your hands with the connect, and so you have to do the. Okay. To shoot. It's fucking fun. Right. The connect was fun. I got both uh, both of them, and the problem is, is there's just nothing to get for them anymore. I have a, a workout game that kicks my ass for the connect for the one. I just never do it because I have to move my couch to do it. That's the downside. Yeah, you, you always had to move your couch to do uh, yoga and all. Yeah, that. I started doing it in the other room and just took the smaller screen. I mean, that's what I could do. I could put a screen in the other room or the projector and then just Ooh. run the switch. Or not the switch, the connect. Or the switch. No, I not? I don't have the switch. That's why. I know. <laughs> but I will say that's the one thing with the, the switch. You don't need to clear your whole room nearly as much because a lot of it you do while sitting. But then that workout thing, a lot of those workouts require you to sit down. Like the thigh one, you have to be sitting when you do that. Yeah. So. Hmm. All right. Fallout 76. Peace. Uh, we got a new update, uh, both for skills and camps. Uh, so the first thing with the camps, uh, you can switch stuff out starting at level 25. Um, so, uh, oh wait, no, sorry. Level 25 is for the skills. Starting at level 25, characters can set up special uh, loadouts uh, uh, while they're at their base. Players can build a uh, punch card machine at their base uh, where you... Uh, uh, or at your uh, train station, or at train stations around the world, where you can access them too, where you can set up loadouts per character. So basically, you can now build a skill, a special loadout. Okay. So where it's like I, this one's going to be my tank. That's gonna be my raid move. That one's gonna be my tank. That one's gonna be my it's my action. nerd. So yeah, on and okay. so forth, depending on what playstyle you need for what you're gonna be doing in the game at that moment based off of the group you're in or what you're running. And you'll be able to switch them out at the train stations, which are safe locations, essentially, minus other players, um, or at your camp. I think it's a great addition. I think it's absolutely amazing. The next thing is the camp system. So we've been all kind of bitching. There's all this stuff we want to do with our camps, and we don't have a lot of budget. Well, uh, now the camp system allows players uh, to build a base uh, within a certain, a certain budget, uh, which is like, meh, okay. But now you can set up, um, uh, you can like set up loadouts for your camp also. So you can have your, I'm selling shit camp, your store, your, your type of camp. Okay. Which if you're like me and you own all the Silicon Joe stuff, it can be your diner. And then you know, I'm selling shit today. Or it can be, 
nope, nobody's welcome. And I'm doing my military bunker loadout and switching it up. And you, you build these and you save them. And then you flip through the ones for what you need. Okay. That's actually kind of interesting. Uh, and then vending machines are still going to be a thing. Um, display cases uh, can now be set up to hold different items across the different camps. Vending machines will... Uh, whatever you put in a vending machine for sale. So say I'm selling nothing but coffee mugs. Okay. No matter what version of my camp, if it has a vending machine, it'll have the same inventory that I'm selling. Okay, cool. But if I'm doing Slocum Joe's, I can set up all the Slocum Joe's stuff in a display case. And then when I switch it to the military one, it could have all the military stuff in the display case. Whatever I set for the display cases will change okay. based off of the one I save. Okay. Um, I still think we need a bigger budget, though. I think the big issue is that this is on an old, old fucking game engine. Um, so, uh, vending display functionality, uh, may not arrive until February 5th. Uh, the developers say as it's still being tested, but, um, it should be on its way soon. Uh, also game fixes, um, daily ops system is, uh, getting expanded. Uh, the daily ops are really fucking difficult in my experience. Um, and you need a good crew because basically it's just the enemy is going to keep coming until you finish what you have to do. And they're going to keep on fucking wrecking you until you finish what you got to do. Oh, um, and there's some fixes with Vault 96 and, and uh, being added to the daily ops, stuff like that. Uh, also, um, a couple quality of life improvements. Um, Good. I'm always down for those. Yeah. Uh, they've worked on the aim assist for players a little bit more um, that they're testing out. Uh, you can batch craft now uh, when you're cooking, which is amazing. I've been wanting batch crafting for so goddamn long. So now it's no longer make one steak at a time. It's make 10 steaks. Um, and then uh, this weekend, Fallout 76 players can log in and get a legendary script, which is pretty cool. It's what you use to buy legendaries if you don't want to find them. Gotcha. Um, so players can earn up to 300 legendary script each day until February 1st. Um, so that means today is the last day for that. Get on there uh, and grab that. So that was the Fallout news. Okay. All good news, I think. All, all good. Yes. Boop. All right. Um, we haven't really talked about this game. No, because I didn't. I don't I think don't we know. talked about it. Yeah. Um. So it's uh House Marquis story based third person shooter. Returnal. Um, it's been delayed to uh, April thirtieth of twenty twenty one. Um, I mean, from the cover photo here, it looks interesting, but I don't have much to say. It kind of gives me a, a very interesting uh, alien vibe. Yeah. And I, I don't know. What, I, what, what bothers me about this is this is an exclusive for a brand new console that's only been out for a few months that is now delayed and can't be there. Yep. So give us an ungodly amount of money for your console. We'll let you know when there's games. Yep. <clears throat> oh, did I mention all the backwards compatibility? On my Xbox. Everything I can play on my Xbox One can be played on my Series X. Just, yes. Just putting that out there, you know, for those PlayStation 5 players that can't play PlayStation 4 games. Oh, and because this is a PlayStation 5 of exclusive, this game will be $69.99. This is a $70 delayed game. Hold on. I'm going to search something real quick. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to look up that's going to convince me. It should cost $10 more. Okay. Good. Mm-hmm. But oh, it's still locked at thirty frames. Yep. Still. Ew, icky pooey. The one thing we asked for. Just fucking unleash it. Give it, give it its its full reserve. I'm actually. Super yeah. Sock says to be honest, people have paid more for even more delayed games. You're right. Um, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them delaying this game. I don't agree with the price raise. Per se, I understand artists and programmers and all that deserve their pay. I'm fine with paying more to make sure they're getting what they deserve. But I don't think that's what this is. I, I just, I don't. I think it's the industry being greedy and still not caring about the people that work in it. Um, and also continuing to not care about the um, the consumers. Because the other thing we're seeing is that this is only on PlayStation that, the, that these increases are happening. They're not happening over with PC or um, Xbox. Uh, this is purely a PlayStation 5 thing, which tells me that um, uh, they don't actually need to do it for the company making the game to cover overhead. This is a agreed thing on Sony's side. Um, 
if you want to delay a game to uh, make it better, make sure it works, that's perfectly fine. But when you're telling me that this is a higher value exclusive title that is going to be delayed when you previously delayed a bunch of other shit that's supposed to be coming to your console, like y'all didn't have anything ready for the console. Like that, that's what this comes down to. You had nothing ready for the console. Um, they asked me to pay for uh, an expensive console to not be able to do anything. It's not backwards compatible worth a damn. Most of the increases aren't that great. We're looking at this one right now. It won't go over 30 frames for what reason? And then the, like the loading, loading screens are nice. Having great. a, having a five second loading screen's good, but what, was five seconds worth the $600? No. I'm playing games from the original Xbox on my Xbox One that look fucking phenomenal. And Load so, quick, run great. And something tells me he used a PS4 Pro because my base PS4, I when it loaded in in 15 seconds, I was like, mm. that seems quick. Yeah, it seemed a little too quick. All right, but that's enough salt out of me. No, yeah. moving on. Moving on to some unsalt. Yeah, 25 years of uh, Tomb Raider, Laura Croft. Fuck yeah. I, I am all for all the Laura, all the Croft, all the Raider, all the Tomb. Okay. I know what I said. Uh, <laughs> um, so 2021 was is the 25th anniversary. Uh, good. So, uh, celebration. I didn't think it would be that long, but yeah, no. It has been that long. You feel old now? Yeah. I feel old. I mean, I'm older about. than this game franchise. I am older than this game franchise, so yeah, yeah. I feel it too. But it's just I didn't think it would be 25 years. Yeah, um, there was another anniversary that we ran into not too, too long ago that I was just like, huh? Oh, shit. And then Mega Man just had its 30th and I'm like, oh, shit. Well, and, this and I think Resident Evil hit it 25th. Yeah, Resident Evil celebrating, I think, 25 as well. So very much in the vein of Resident Evil, they're they're doing a big celebration, a year-long celebration, 25 years. Benchmark. Yeah, we're old. You know what I got for 25 years of being alive? More bills. Yeah. More pops and cracks and, you know. A pain in your thigh that you don't know where it came from. Mine's normally the neck. My head's just going to fall off yeah, one shoulder, day. Shoulder and, shoulder and thigh for me. My, my head's just going to fall off one day, and I'm going to bend right in the middle of my back, too. <laughs> I, I don't know. Do you know Gmod? I'm just going to end up in the ground. And go, <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> but they're celebrating 25 years. They're saying community features, uh, nostalgia content, and all kinds of surprises along the way, but they did tell us one little thing. There's been this whole, like, the original Laura Croft games can't be in the same time. <sighs> How did I manage that? I don't know. Sorry for hitting the mic. The you know, There's been this whole, the original Laura Croft games can't be in the same timeline as this one, yada, yada. And I, I never took it that way. I was just like, she's just younger. It, like, it's the beginning. It's when she first starts dealing with this shit. It all happens really back to back to back. There's no real break between those three games. She's younger. It's just, that's what it was. That's always what it was to me. This was never two timelines for me. But they've confirmed that they're going to connect the two timelines. They're going to unify them. This is going to become one thing. They're not doing it at all the way I wanted. I wanted a new Laura Croft game because how long has it been since Shadow of the Tomb Raider? Two years? 2018. So, yeah. Two, going, two and some. Going on three? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, no, nothing new about the game? Okay. I guess we'll just get this Netflix anime instead. Look, I'm sure it'll be beautiful. I'm sure it'll be amazing. I'm, I'm sure I'll watch it. I'm sure it'll be a great story. But it seems to be the new thing in gaming is let's do animes. Castlevania. I mean, Castlevania did well with it, and I'm glad that they did it. Well, Castlevania but... is different because that was just let us tell you the story while we re still release other games. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Konami haven't released a single goddamn one since probably Lords of Shadow 2 in like 2014. They probably did an HD remaster of the collection, if I recall correctly. But... Castlevania Lord of Shadow 2 was 2014. Yeah. Uh, Castlevania Grimoire of Souls was 2019. What is Grimoire of Souls? Is that the uh, mobile? Uh, yeah. I yeah, know. I don't count that. I'm not going to count that. Okay, so you putting stipulations on this does not change the fact oh. that the game was released. <laughs> uh, slot Machines in 2017. Slot Machines in 2015. Yeah. Uh, Konami, doesn't, Konami doesn't care too much. When, when the anime came out, they were like, this is what we're hedging our bets on now. They, they don't... 
let me put it like this. No main game. Yeah, no. Um, also, to be fair, the anime has uh, released in 2017 and has only done three seasons. So even that's kind of like, okay, you know. Um, but yeah, so that, that actually falls right into what I'm saying. So Castlevania, this. I won't say Resident Evil because they've been doing animes for a while. League is doing animes, but they're still releasing st- stuff. So I'm not mad about that one. But it seems to be this new thing of like, we want to take our storytelling to this level. And it's like, that's great. You know how many things I watch that I want a game for, though? So the concept is, is yes and. Yes and. But instead, we're just getting yes. Yes, but. However, they say surprises along the way. Maybe we'll get a game announcement once they get closer to a completion. Then maybe playing the smart and not being like, there's a game. We'll delay it 16 times, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Maybe it'll be like, there's a game and it's finished, you know? Or there's a game and we're just getting all the bugs out. Here's the date. Yeah. Um, I don't know who would make it. I don't know if it'd be Square or what. Um, I mean, they, I thought they did good with these. I don't know why people shot on these so much. I enjoyed all three. I I started I was up on the I started up on the first one and kind of just pulled away from it. It it feels good. It felt good. It didn't really do anything negative. It's just I fell out. I, I find that you seem to have an issue with storytelling. I have ADHD. Let me be. You have an issue with storytelling. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't um you did make a comment that i was thinking about the other day though because th- this brought it up and then the free game that we got for february um being uh indiana jones when the bethesda nano uh, indiana jones game announcement happened your one of the first things you said was was going to be though tomb raider and uncharted but with indie to be fair without indie those games don't exist i know so I, I made it well aware. I just said those style of games. It but probably it will just brought be. back around, but uh, a full circle. Considering we're not getting a Tomb Raider game, at least not yet. Oh no! And they've kind of repeatedly shot the Uncharted franchise in the face. Well, they said his end, so it's yeah. Over. And then they decided to release one about the female characters, but undersold it and didn't do any fucking marketing, which was very unfair. Fuck no, they didn't. And, they, and then earlier they did one on the Vita. Yeah, that didn't and, do well. And now they're doing a a movie that can't seem to hold on to a fucking director or um, or main actor well no it's got the main actor it's holland is it holland yeah he's already done a bunch of fucking uh, photos on set and everything oh i and, thought those you know, were mock-up nope those are real him oh. and his 18 directors i okay. mean it's not his fault that there's 18 directors oh no of course not so but all right uh moving on okay Good. we're gonna wrap this up we're running along a lot of discussion today hey rocket league um they're doing football stuff they're doing football stuff which is a big game watch what you say call it the big game big game big main game no no, i'm serious there's a weird trademark on the other word really yeah it's big game okay well big game big game play big good um you get play big good when you play (laughs) it's football you can say football okay uh rocket league it is doing the big game um they've got an actual football you hit around you put teams on your hearts yeah and it's called the gridiron mode which is similar to their hockey mode i would i would be sure of so uh go out there score some some field goals and win in weird news field goal is a touchdown in this um each goal is three or seven so yes you get either (laughs) or um if the ball is passed in or if the ball is loose i mean it's it's gonna be similar to the hockey yeah. where it plays like it Have now fun. interesting thing while we're talking about football the big game will not be in 4k they're claiming it is because they're trying to keep everyone separate so they don't want the people running the cameras in the same thing so they're not doing 4k they're still doing like 170 cameras or some shit because that's not going to take a bunch of people to run but all right Sure. I think they just didn't want to send all the 4K expensive gear down to Tampa. I think that's what it comes See, this is, the, this is the funny thing is you can have 50 cameras total and have them all run 4K and only need like six people total. That's the funny thing. I, I don't want to form. Yeah, whatever. I don't give a shit. Moving on. Moving on. Uh, Shoe news. So uh, earlier last year, we talked about Arizona... Uh, I believe it was. I don't think it was Adidas. I don't remember I, who it was. I want to say it was uh, Reebok. I don't want. I think it was Reebok. Uh, but even still, Adidas and Arizona formed together to make yet another very nice green tea styled shoe. Uh, with its, what kind of color would you call that? I call it teal, but yeah, I, sure. I, okay. I don't do colors. 
No, that's right. So uh, teal with its nice little passion pink style uh, cherry blossoms coating the entire thing. Uh, you said you like the what do they call those? Aglix. I never I, the uh, bit at the end of the shoe that keeps it from fraying and falling apart. Normally plastic in this case, a cl- uh, pinched metal. metal. Yeah, and I I every time you tell me that, I'm like, oh yeah, that's what you're talking about because I've never known. Yeah, they're Aglix. I don't know where the name came from. Did you know that the the bumps in the road that separate the lines and stuff like that have a name? I don't know what it's called. It's actually named after the uh, adhesive that holds them to the ground, which is named after the guy that invented the adhesive. I know all that, but I can't remember the name. My family always called them turtles. But oh, okay. They have a name, too. Uh, turquoise? I think it's a little lighter than turquoise. It is Arizona green tea. Uh, Can. Tan, uh, can color. <laughs> yeah, it is it is a very specific color. It's not quite mint. No. It's yeah. it's lower than mint. We're going to go like this. It is green tea Arizona can. It's probably got a color code. Yeah. Oh, that doesn't help us. Palette. Come on. Yeah, come on. Interwebs, let's go. Interwebs, let's move it. All right, so it doesn't have names. If it had a hex code, I could do something with yeah, it. Yeah, no, there's no hex code. Uh, type in hex code for Arizona green tea can. Color. Uh, hex code color. There. There you go. It is the D8F3C9, which is just being called the green tea Although, that seems a little off. That seems a little off. I don't think that's right. Some more like that. That's closer, which is a C9 F3 D1. <laughs> <laughs> eh, in yeah. short, in short, it is it is a mix between a very, very light blue with a hint of green. It, it, it's the best way to really throw it. What um, are they releasing? What's the price? Oh, right. I left that page. Hold on. Back it up. Back it up. We need to keep a blank it's tab a, that it's you can a, search in. Yeah, I know, right? It's $100, if I recall. Yes, it is. February 4th. Hundo. My mom's birthday. So they're the Adidas superstars. The Adidas superstars. And they look really nice as far as shoe style, but I don't think I would ever wear these. Oh, and to be clear, oh. um, I don't care that the big game is not in 4K. I'm not watching it either way. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I will catch the commercials on YouTube. Because, wait, Tampa? Who's Tampa? Well, no, no. It, the stadium it is Tampa. But who, who's playing? I don't know who's playing. Oh. But the stadium has nothing to do with either one of them. The stadiums are chosen ahead of time. Because each stadium eventually gets its turn. Oh, it is Tampa. Hey. Wow. Wow. Talk about underdogs. Okay. Um, way to go. Question. Uh, okay, double check. Maybe it wasn't in Tampa then. <laughs> Pretty feet cover, says the chat. Uh, just where's the game being played? Oh, okay. Uh, where? Uh, more about the game. Okay. This isn't helping. I thought it was in Tampa. I'm probably thinking wrong because the team's Tampa. Although that could just be a weird coincidence because the location is picked ahead of time. Mm-hmm. A lot of the times the teams that go are not the ones that play. Oh, yeah. No, you're right. It just happens to be. Okay. Yeah. And then look. Uh, For the next year, it's going to be in England. Cal- yeah. Very interesting. Wow. They brought it home, so to speak. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Way to go. Way to go. Um, you know, it also probably has a lot to do with the fact that Florida is not restricting things nearly as much as other states when it comes to the pandemic. Mayhaps. So, all right, moving on. Moving on. We got three posters here. Yeah. So that's post number one. I like that one. I like this one. I don't like this one. Post number two. You don't like. It's a little too in your face. Fuck you. It's it's a little too in your face. Hey, here's a film. No. Hey, do me a favor. Can you zoom in? I want to see what's on the ribbon. It uh-huh. is the film canister. It, yeah, the ribbon is this image. Is it? Oh, it is. It, for that part, at least. I don't know about the lower ones. Um. So, for the people that can't see, uh, they dropped three trailers for Sny- the Snyder Cut of Justice League um, and a date for 3-18-21. Um, so, March 18th, it'll be hitting uh, HBO Max. Yeah, let's pull up the third one. I like the first one. I like the second one. I don't like... Or, sorry. I like the first one. I like the third one. I don't like the second one. Same. It's a little too egocentric. Yeah, it's a little. Sense. It's a little bit like, haha! I managed to get my thing done. Wait, scroll back down. Hold on. Stop. Scroll down. Scroll down. 
One more. So the shield's in the rubble. That's it. Interesting. Yeah, you don't really get too much in any of these. Yeah, it's kind of ignoring the characters in these. Yeah. <laughs> um, like if it... Like if... Uh, remember um, Death for a Friend? Where it had uh, Superman's uh, shirt ripped on top of a thing? Okay, yeah. That would have been nice there. Yeah. Because it doesn't... Is... Isn't Doomsday in this? No, Doomsday was uh, Batman vs. Superman. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Then and I didn't even want to call it Doomsday because it was made completely different and it was crap. You're right, but I would prefer something that would relevate that comic books were at least read. Yeah, um, I'm probably not going to jump on this one right away, if at all. I, I didn't enjoy Batman vs. Superman. It's very something that I actually enjoy a Snyder cut of anything. So I'm going to leave it at that. 318.21 for you guys. Streaming on HBO Max. Shin Oturaman! Stop yelling. <laughs> I'm sorry. We've got a trailer for the new uh, Ultraman. Um, it looks pretty good. Uh, my big complaint is we get about two seconds of Ultraman in this. Yeah. Uh, I know it's a teaser, but damn. And, I mean, it looks good. We got all of this human stuff. Not a lot of Ultraman stuff. I'm pretty sure two bad guys. Two to three. And, like, two seconds of Ultraman. Um, I find it really interesting. Uh, so, the bad guys are very heavily CGI'd, but a very nice CGI. The problem is it, the colors looks, are too it not looks, this world. It looks actual. It looks like puppet. Oh, I don't think that's it. I think it's CGI. It, it's just... It just... The reason why I did it like <laughs> Sox that... Sox says, oh, we fight Pokemon. The only reason why I did it like that is because of that mouth open right there. It looks like... I mean, like... they probably had something that they did that with for motion capturing to make the cgi easier but maybe i think this is full cgi on to things but yeah i mean he looks good um i'm wondering what the american release will be like but yeah there's a trailer go check it out um you can probably find it in english uh, not the trailer but like you can find it on english sites yeah. um the trailer will still not be in english Another thing that is hopefully going to pop out that gets its American release because it made it made a lot of really good money in uh, Japan is uh, Demon Slayer, uh, Kim, uh, Kimetsu no Yaiba, the movie Mugen Train or Infinity Train, and the animation that went into this like stellar, stellar animation, beautiful voice acting. I I want to see this movie. I only see this coming to America in two ways. Three tops. Uh, one, Netflix bids high enough. Okay, uh, considering they're... it just considering the show just dropped onto Netflix, I fear that as well. Well, you know, this is the first year they're in the green. Oh, really? I don't know if you've known this, but um, mm. they've been borrowing money for the last, like, 15 years. Really? Yeah, and oh. so this is the first year where they actually are making money rather than spending it. Um, and they've got, I think, like, $8 billion on, on hand to do with what they want. Um... So they, they could buy it because what they've been doing is they've been buying anime movies that go to theaters in Japan and Korea and stuff like that. They've been buying the American release rights and just releasing them here. That's what they did with the anime Godzilla movies, those three anime Godzilla movies. Interesting. Those went to theater in Japan and Korea and stuff like that. And they bought the American distribution rights netflix did and distributed them just wow on the, in that okay hold on hold on hold on that actually that makes a lot of sense then okay um, yeah they got that yeah they got that game stop money <laughs> no they don't um but i am so that's theory one netflix bids high enough theory two crunchy roll which is honestly i feel like the most likely and theory three would be the the company itself trying to distribute, but I don't think that's going to happen considering they distribute through other companies to us, like Crunchyroll and Netflix. Yeah, and, and this is Anyplex, so Anyplex is kind of does like a lot of overseas stuff. They are the reason why we have mostly anime we do have, um, aside from like things that are strictly distributed through Crunchyroll and Funimation, of course. Um, when you move on to the next tab, move on to the last one first. Copy. This one. Okay. Okay. Um, but I, you have no idea. If this releases in theaters, it may be the first movie I see in 2021. I don't think we're going to get a theatrical release for it. You don't think so? Maybe like a, um, Fathom event where it's like a special one night, one hour block, like they're they're only showing it at one time in the day. 
thing that Regal uh, I, does through Fathom. I will do my I, damnedest. I don't think they'll do a full theatrical release for yep. it. And that's not because it doesn't deserve it, but that's but because it I don't think it. the American market is there yet for anime films to release that way. Po- you can't say Pokemon I'm because not, that was I'm a not, very different I'm situation. Not. And yes, animation films do well. I just don't think the market hears for it because you got to figure it's only really the younger or middle in our case generations that are in anime. There's right. still a huge chunk of the theatrical viewing that is not in anime. I will, I will concur. I think we'll get there. I just don't think we're there yet. Okay. And then boop, there's your spy kids. So we all watched it for some reason. I own the first three for for some other reason <laughs> i my adhd kind of tuned it all out i didn't watch four i i don't remember i remember i remember having the moments of seeing them i just don't remember any of it at all i know alan alan cumming was in it i know cheech marin was in it i know antonio banderas was the father yeah uh and machete Dan Trejo was in it yeah as the Wait, uncle? when is cheech in it um i mean yeah, see okay i just don't remember um but the, yeah um, the uncle is bosley like the halfway man right, okay uh, yeah the uncle is danny trejo so um but robert rodriguez's robert rodriguez's child films through dimension films which was also very interesting um did four of them um he's coming back um Rodriguez will return uh to the spy kids franchise uh for a uh, reboot done by skydance um now it's been 20 years since the first movie came out uh jesus christ and yeah and rodriguez has been doing a lot and has been bouncing back and forth between doing uh family and action for a long time now and recently did um some family stuff uh uh, sock says is this because they're doing a shock boy and lava girl 2 or something um i don't think it's because of that. I think Rodriguez wanted to get back into the family stuff because he hasn't done it for a while. And his first lean in was the Shark Boy and Lava Girl sequel where they're all grown up and there's like all these new superpowered people and whatnot. He completely recasted that thing. Didn't even bother getting uh, Taylor Lautner back for it. Um, and now, why are we looking at Mike Judge? <laughs> I just oh, realized. <laughs> I kind of I kind of sc- uh, scaled away because he's in it. Oh, uh, he's in Spy Kids? Yeah. Okay. Um... But yeah, so Stark Boy and Lava Girl came out. Everybody said it was great. Rodriguez did well. It was on Netflix. I don't think the Spy Kids reboot is because of that. I, th- I think it definitely helped. But I feel like this is something he probably wanted to do just like he also wanted to do Shark Boy and Lava Girl too. Yeah. Uh, and Skydance did confirm the news of, spy- of the Spy Kid reboot, uh, which will center around a multicultural family rather than just a Hispanic family this time, which is interesting. Yeah, okay. um, I've always liked how much Rodriguez focuses on Hispanic uh, culture and and whatnot, but I I, I guess it, I can kind of see the concept of show that you know things can be mixed, not just one culture. I understand that, but he definitely did feel uh, fill an area of a culture that was being kind of ignored in in cinema. Um, I'm a big fan of a lot of his movies. Um, the Spy Kid movies were fun when I was a kid. Now as an adult, I'm like, whoa, okay. I'm sure I I'm sure I enjoyed them. I just I don't remember them. Yeah. Um, and then you know. I, when it comes to the things he did that I enjoy as an adult or as a kid that probably shouldn't have been watching those when I didn't, he did the El Matarachi, Desperado, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, all those. Did he? Oh, I was about to say, did he do? No. Spru- no, it's just more like uh, Go and pull him up, though. You, you've you seen plenty of Rodriguez's stuff, whether you know it or not. Oh, uh, where uh, is... He'd be up just a little bit higher. Right there. there. Uh, uh, yeah, I... Sin City. Uh, he did the Sin City movies oh, with Frank right. Miller. Um, yeah. Frank Miller also uh, partial directed those. Planet Terror. Um, we Can Be Heroes was the um, sequel to Shark Boy and Lava Girl. From Dust Till Dawn, the first movie, the sequels, I don't know if he was involved. I don't think he was. He just gets credit because of the character creation. The Jetsons? Uh, he produced, an up- uh, produced it, or whatever that was. Something that never happened. Oh. Um, but no, he, he's done a lot and he's interesting. Yeah. yeah I mean, you're looking at production. That's but, why. Yeah. Uh, I can do writing in a sec. Uh, boop. And then I just click writer that. There we go. And I just, I don't that think list. it does it that way. You're right. It does. Just collapse it. See where it says hide. Oh, that worked. Oh, that's right. He's also working on the Johnny quest, uh, movie. Uh, oh, which I kind of hope happens. Okay. Yeah. 
I would actually be very interested in that. I loved Johnny Quest as a kid. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right, you, you you're doing good work. So he's been around for a while. I, some of the stuff kind of came out of nowhere. Like Spy Kids was like, holy crap, that was interesting. And Spy Kids two and three were all even more like, okay. Um, Shark Boy and Lava Girl just came out of fucking nowhere. <laughs> you yeah, know? like like you you go straight from Desperado to Still Dawn three ish, and then kind of go into Spy Kids, and you're just like, well. How contrasting. And if you look, it says story, because he didn't actually do uh, the From Dust Till Dawn sequel. Uh, someone else uh, did those. So okay, it's, point, his point credit still for his sta- characters. Point still stands yeah. that he did, you know, From Dust Till Dawn, Mariachi, Desperado. Yeah. I was going to say, also, Spike technically, is. Tarantino wrote From Dust Till Dawn. Oh, did he really? Yeah, Rodriguez directed it. Tarantino dir- uh, just wrote it. Copy. So, uh, look at director, though. 51 things. Like, he's a busy dude. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, you're thinking about the fact that his career started in the 90s. That kind of scares me. Uh, not scares me in a bad way. scares me in a good way. Yeah. Uh, Machete Kills in Space has been talked about for a while. I'm sure it'll be fun. Um, And, yes, I'm aware that I'm saying Machete, uh, machete wrong. I'm saying Machete. And machete. It's because I love Danny Trejo, and I'm going to continue singing that way. So, yeah, this seems like an interesting thing. All right. Lastly, you like X-Men? Uh, I'm okay with them. No big X-Men patch? Not really. Like a few X Men, yes, but when it comes down to Gene McGlasses, no. Okay, one line in one movie. I hate him. I hate him. The character or the actor? But a little both. Because if you like Sonic, you like the actor, and you may just not realize it. You didn't like Sonic? I like Sonic, but I didn't throw hands here in a minute. That's fine. Uh, So Marvel Comics is putting the last uh, spot of the new X-Men lineup up to the fans, beginning January 27th and running until February 2nd, so you still have time to get in on this. You can go and actually vote as to who the last member of the team should be. Um, So uh, they're doing the uh, Mutant Nation of uh, uh, Krakoa, Uh, and they're uh, doing a big list here of 10 candidates. Is Jubilee on there? Um, so list of 10 candidates that, uh, receiving, uh, the, that could receive the spot, uh, Banshee, uh, Polaris, Forge, Boom Boom, Tempo, Cannonball, Sunspot, Strong Guy, uh, Mar- uh Marrow, and Armor. I've only heard of two of those, um, which is Marrow and Forge. Uh, let's see. And then Marvel has provided what people are saying the best part of every election, an I voted card. Um. Oh, that's Which is, cute. Yeah, kind of cool. Uh, I don't know who's actually part of the current team up that they would be joining. So if you want to just pull up the Marvel website, see if we can find it real quick. Um, I like when comic book companies do this whole make the. Uh, oh, so it's like uh, she's kind of got similar powers to uh, Storm's uh, nephew. Yeah, Bones. Uh, Spike. Bones. Um, yeah, go ahead and pull up Marvel X Men voting. I uh, want to see if they give us the full list of the team that they're. Uh, the team we're filling out. Me. What happened? I don't... Google, the Google broke. The Google broke. All right. Marvel X-Men voting. There we go. Um... Uh, we need to find the actual website, not a news article. Not there you go. Ah, uh, okay. What, what? Get out of here. All right, so... The X-Men election, choose okay. one, one per person. Yeah, so that's the section we were already looking at. That's it. It's literally no, just... scroll down. See if there's more. Oh, okay. We okay. get to see the yeah. people. Keep scrolling. Boom, boom. Cannonball. Forge. That's not the Forge I know. Well, they go through the changes, you know. Well, Polaris and Strong Guy. And Sunspot and Tempo. Uh, Sunspot and Tempo weren't on that list. Interesting. Tempo. Oh, there's Tempo. Okay, Sunspot. Sunspot. All right. Interesting. So if I click one of these, will it open up? Yes, it will. Yep. Bring cool. up the thing. I just I wanted to know who the rest of the team was, like, but that's interesting. Oh, and it gives, gives stats. stats. Yeah, the Marvel website's actually really cool. Shit like this. Um, let me see Forge. Let me see the current iteration of Forge. Kind of looks like that, that's the, similar to the what dad from Invincible. Kinda. Um. Um. I, I just wanted to know who they're going with. Yeah. Uh, scroll back up because I saw that Marvel had a couple things here. Um, yeah, one of these. See if one of these will tell us. Who are the writers and artists pulling for? Well, that doesn't... Okay, that doesn't. Yeah. 
uh, what we're reading on. So is it the current run of X Men? Is that what we're? Yeah, it would be for the current run. So then I'm just gonna go comics and then X Men. No, that's 2019. I like that cover. What's this? I'm just gonna check this cover real quick. Oh, cool, strange cover. Yeah, I like strange. Um. Hmm. Well, okay, it looks like we've got Wolverine and Cyclops, so two staples. Oh, well, yeah. Please don't do that. There we go. No. I'm not finding a, a helpful list on this, but still, cool concept. I love when, you know, comics do things like this. Um, they didn't, you know, you got to vote to kill Robin at one point, and they're getting to vote to fill out a team. Uh, so this one just got published not too long ago. If it coincides with this, it'll involve Cyclops, Storm, and Marvel Girl as well. Interesting. All right. Let's see the right cover. Ooh. That's the end. That's the end. That's all she wrote. That's all she we wrote. We ran a little late. Sorry. No, it's not your fault. It's me too. We're at 224. So, I mean, some of that was the preload. Yeah, some of that was. All right. Um, yeah, go read some comics. Let us know because I am so out of date on X-Men. Are those xenomorphs? I don't know. <laughs> they look like xenomorphs. They do. All right. Um, and... Uh, you're not going to like this one, but uh, I don't really like that. be chill. Stay cool. <laughs> chill. The Ice Age. <laughs>